Hello. Hello. Good evening. Let me adjust my microphone so it's actually in the proper position. Hi, everybody. What the heck is up? It is time for more Aces and Attorneys. Hold on. Let's go back to the title screen so we can have some sick theme music. Just real quick while I do my intro. Make sure everything's working. Dun, 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 dun. What's up, everybody? Uh, Evgen Moranth, hello! New Ghost 9, hello! Yeah, we stream uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Pretty consistent. Easy to keep track of. Also, um, all OT, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream squad. Just checking to make sure that all my stuff posted like it should have. Gonna remember to silence my damn phone this time, because every time I watch my streams back, you can hear my phone making noises in the background. I always forget to silence it. Anyway, last time on Ace Attorney Chronicles, uh, we finished case, game two, case one, in fucking record time. Just beat the whole thing in like one sitting. I am hype. We're going on a hype, not not a, like an actual Twitch hype train, but a, a, a hype train that I have generated because I am hype for this game. I've got my water and I got some cookies with the shape of Texas baked into them. So if I get hungry, I can have a cookie. They're just sitting on my desk. No plate or anything, because I'm a barbarian. They're just sitting on my <laughs> on my desk, um, on the other side of my mouse, just sitting there waiting for their time. Anyway, let's play it's dirty. <laughs> It needs okay so this is the one we finished last time i love this cover art it's so pretty but we're not doing that anymore memoirs of the clouded kokoro let's fucking go i'm hype oh uh yeah okay cool i've never done that before i didn't know it let you pick scenes that's interesting dramatic it was a ghastly tale of a winter's night. One of an invisible killer and a crime perpetrated on the pavement along Briar Road. As the victim lay at death's door, the mystery of just who had stabbed the young lady from behind had been resolved. Yes, yeah, within the first game, I remember this. But no sooner had my friend saved that Eastern Exchange student from his harrowing plight. Then in the dim, flickering shadows of gaslight, did a second bizarre crime rend the stillness of that very night. I dare say most can still recall the sensational headlines of the day. Haunted apartment of death. The condemned criminal's curse. The dread demon of coal gas. Yet, Though the great detective had at once discerned the truth upon his arrival at the scene. I'm sure he did. It only proved to be the overture that announced the rising of the curtain on a most tragic play. Cool, I'm not nervous at all. <laughs> I'm just in a state over this game now until we figure out what the heck is happening. Because there's a lot of like twisted up threads that I'm nervous about. Let's fucking go. My name is Rienosuke Naruhodo. I'm a fledgling lawyer just starting out on my journey. Six months ago, I arrived as a visiting student of law. Having made the long voyage across the sea from the empire to of Japan, of, of Japan to here, London, England. And on the way, in quite extraordinary circumstances, I made the acquaintance of a world famous detective. Currently, I reside in the attic of the detective's own lodgings, from where I run my legal consultancy of sorts. I've successfully defended a number of clients in Britain's highest court, the Old Bailey. But since a particularly grueling and unforgettable legal battle four months ago now, I haven't returned to the courtroom. In truth, I lost my right to return. But that epic trial was just one small part of an epic tale. A tale which was now about to awaken from slumber. 
thanks to a letter that arrived this morning from my homeland. So wait, did he lose his legal license after the whatever, after like the last trial of the last game? Oh no! Hmm, what a delicious smell wafting up the stairs. Must be nearly time for breakfast. Better go down to Mr. Sholmes' suite. Say good morning to the great detective and his flatmate. Oh my god, they were roommates. <laughs> Oh, good. I was just about to call up to you. The bacon's ready. Good morning, Iris. It smells delicious as usual. Uh, before we eat, though, I have some news. I had a surprise this morning. Hi, Shulves! Here he is! Shh! Not another word, Mr. Nadahodo. This could be just the abstruse thing for my pre-breakfast stagnation repelling mental simulation, my dear fellow. Morning to you too, Mr. Shulves. <laughs> Ah, yes, I see. So that's it. Oh, you're very close. <laughs> you're very close. The truth is as clear to me as day. My faculties of observation have revealed it again. Uh, what are you talking about? You, Mr. Nadahodo, you have this very morning met with a surprise. Well, is that not the case? Um, really, my dear fellow, it barely wants explanation. Firstly, your hair is particularly unkempt, somewhat reminiscent of a bird's nest. Secondly, you have neglected to fasten the third button of your jacket. Clearly, when considered together, these two facts point out to you that you have been- to you having been flustered this morning. Can I talk now? But of course, of course. Though I don't look for admiration, you understand. My hair always looks like this. It's been this way since I first met you. Oh. It has. And the button was ripped off last night, if you remember. By you. Hallie pulled your button off? Ah, yes, I recall the incident now. It was after supper, was it not? As the evening advanced, I picked up my violin and began to play the wailing notes of a haunting tune. But then, to my utter dismay, the third string snapped. Why did it have to happen? Why? Little wonder then that in my vexation I grabbed the first button I saw and ripped it from its proper place. Well, I'd like it back now, please. It's troubling me that I can't fasten my jacket. And it's troubling me that you expect me to know where it is. Somewhere thereabouts on the floor, one presumes. Helpful. <laughs> Sholmes, don't vandalize your boy's clothes. What matters at the present time, my dear fellow, is simply whether or not my deduction was unerring. But Hurley, Runo said it when he came in, didn't he? I had a surprise this morning. There he is. The look of a dumbass. We love him, but he's dumb. <laughs> there he goes. Well, that really is a surprise. He's so stupid. Mwah. <laughs> Yes, this man is the pride of the British Empire, the famous consulting detective, Mr. Herlock Sholmes. Can't be a single person in the world who doesn't know his name. All right then, enough of this silly conversation. Come and eat this bacon before it goes cold. And I have a new herbal tea for you to try too. My new, my latest special blend. And here we have Iris Wilson, Mr. Sholmes' lodger and companion. Truly exceptional young girl who's the author of a highly successful serialization here in London. Yes, The Adventures of Herlock Sholmes, as published in Rance Magazine. So, Mr. Nadahodo, won't you put us out of our misery? What surprised you this fine morning? Ah, uh, well, I received a letter from Japan. Oh, from Susie, you mean? Was it? Really? That's right, and she had some rather startling news, in fact. Ah. Intriguing indeed. You must tell us all about it over breakfast. Oh yes, what fun! It's time to talk to my mans! This is a letter that arrived from Japan this morning, by International Post. Oh, how lovely! Look at Susie's beautiful writing! I wish I could read it. And how is your judicial assistant faring, may I ask? She's very well, thank you. In fact, according to what she's written, 
she actually appeared as a lawyer at the Japanese Supreme Court and won a case. Okay, so this takes place after... We're not in Flashback Town yet. Um, this takes place after case... The first case. Okay. The timeline has been established. Really? Oh, isn't she wonderful? A cut above your good self, my dear fellow. Ouch! I've won cases too, you know. Like, all of them so far. Apparently, Mr. Natsume appeared in the trial as a witness. Natsume. Natsume. No, I don't recall that name. Of course you do. We helped the man twice. You know, in those two cases that took place on Briar Road six months ago? The first one, and then the second one that we, the audience, have no idea about yet? Ah, the mustache twitchy man with the somewhat feline eyes and mustache. He didn't have two mustaches, Hurley. Yes, who could forget those two cases? They made a very deep impression on me. Although I must confess, the details are a little hazy now. Very deep impression they made on you, clearly. So, what was this startling news penned by Miss Suzato? Do you remember the case of the haunted lodgings, Mr. Sholmes? Ah, yes. It's very interesting, you know. I don't feel entirely uncertain that a case of that nature did not... not occur. He's totally forgotten, then. Anyway, in her letter... Mrs. Otto asked that we read over her case notes again and investigate further. Though it took place half a year ago, for what purpose? Because of something that Mr. Natsume said to her, apparently. He suggested that the real reason why she was called back to Japan so suddenly might have something to do with that case on the haunted lodgings. Oh? On Mr. Natsume's return to Japan, Mrs. Suzato's father questioned him, questioned him about the case, she says. And something Mr. Natsume said appeared to trouble for... for Blah, 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 blah. Professor Mikotobo prompting him to send that telegram. Oh, that case, yes. It was very strange, wasn't it? Yes. Naya compiled the whole story into a nice, neat manuscript ready for publication, too. But then Hurley here was all funny about it, remember? It was very mean. That story must not be published, you said. Very mysteriously as well. Really? I said that. Are you sure? Do you perhaps know something about it as well, Mr. Sholmes? Sholmes, are you in on the secret government call outpost? Oi! And what about why Miss Suzato was suddenly told four months ago that she had to return to Japan? It's been four months now since we waved Susie off at, Susie off at Dover. It was such a shock, wasn't it? The way she just suddenly announced that she had to go back to Japan. Indeed it was, due to a telegram she received from her homeland, I believe. That's right, telling her to return urgently. Yes, because her father had passed away. No, 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 it just said he was suffering from a high fever, the cause of which was unknown. He's not dead. According to this letter, that news about her father's fever was just a ruse. A ruse? So Susie's daddy lied to her so she'd make the voyage back home? Why would he do that? I have to admit, I have absolutely no idea. But she believes it's almost certainly related to the case of the haunted lodgings. Summoning her back to Japan so suddenly like that, I wonder what Mrs. Zato's father is hiding. Hmm. Hallie, do you know what it's all about? Oh, coat? Suddenly coat? Hmm? Ah, uh, well, who can say? What? B but you said... Please, I have engagements, my dear fellow. My calendar is quite surprisingly full today. Oh, he knows something. This man knows some shit that he's not telling us. And a stringent analysis of the matter would be excessive, I feel, even if I were quite at leisure. So, may the man the fort in my absence, won't you, Iris? I will, Hurley, don't worry. See you later. I love his little, like, hand gestures. It's so cute. He scuttled off rather quickly there. I think perhaps Professor Mikotoba isn't the only person hiding something here. You said it, Ryunosuke. Sasaki-san was involved in two cases, but only one of them was forbidden from being published. By, of all people, Mr. Sholmes. 
Aha! Uh -huh. I found them at last! Iris, are, are they... The notes about the case? That's right. Susie and I compiled them together. The case of the haunted lodgings. Do you want to read them, Runo? Absolutely. Thank you, Iris. I have no idea what secrets could still be hiding in the shadows of this case. Perhaps if I read over the notes again, something might come to light. That's the spirit! And now we enter flashback mode. And so, Iris and I decided to read over the case notes again together. Everything from what happened to our investigation and that fierce battle in court that followed. Reliving every detail. I just need to find a clue. And I have all the time in the world. Because, of course... I'm no longer allowed to practice law in the courts of Great Britain. Oh no, my boy! Is it because of the last game? Or did something else happen? Oh no. He got Apollo justice. <laughs> it was six months ago. A mysterious incident that unfolded on the wintry streets of London. A young woman was found lying on the snowy pavement of Briar Road with a knife in her back. Fortunately, her life was spared, but she was unconscious for several days following the incident. The fog was thick and nobody saw her attacker, but by a cruel twist of fate, a visiting Japanese student was walking behind her at the time and was duly arrested. That man was Soseki-san, and the man who effected his arrest was Mr. Sholmes. Leaving in our compatriots innocent, Suzato-san and I decided to represent Soseki-san in court. And after a grueling trial of many twists and turns, we finally managed to prove his innocence. Joyful, joyous, jubilant jubilation! Was the man's reaction after the trial. But his jubilant jubilation was short-lived. We received a telegram from Mr. Sholmes the following morning. The victim of the Briar Road stabbing has regained consciousness. Hurry to Bart's at once. So Suzato-san and I summoned a hansom and headed immediately to the hospital. Uh, excuse me, there's a rat. There is a rat in your hospital. There you are at last. Good morning, Mr. Sholmes. I think not. Oh! You're late! What on earth took you so long? Your telegram only arrived at five o'clock, Mr. Sholmes, and it's a 20-minute ride to the hospital. That's right, and it's half past five now. I think we made very good time. The time is utterly irrelevant. The fact is, I've been waiting for what has felt like an eternity. Uh, in point of fact, I myself was awoken at four this morning by a telegram boy. And feeling it was somewhat unjust that I alone had been roused at such an hour, I sent one to you. They live above you. Couldn't you have just gone and told them? Well, thanks for that. Anyway, you're here now, so the victim is over there. She's only just regained consciousness. Aw, she cute. You should introduce yourselves, and I shall observe from here. That's the lady who was found on the snow-covered pavement with a knife in her back. Her name is... Ah, uh, yes, here we are. Miss Green. Olive Green, I believe, is what it was. Um, good morning. Aww. Uh, hello. Um, I'm, uh, Rinosuke Naruhodo from the Empire of Japan. Okay, she needs a voice. Oh no! Was it your knife that- Are you the man who- uh, No, 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 I'm- I'm a lawyer. And I'm Suzato Mikotoba. Pleasure to meet- Pleased to meet you. Oh no! Was- Was it your knife then? Are you the one? Uh, no, 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 I assure you. I'm Mr. Naruhodo's judicial assistant. We heard that you'd regained consciousness and wanted to come to give you our best wishes. The best wishes? For me? Um, thank you. I'm Olive. Olive Green. 
I'm an artist. Well, uh, no, that's not right, is it? What I mean is, I'm trying to be an artist. Well, what I really mean is, I desperately want to be an artist. Relatable. But the truth is, I don't have any talent. I know I don't. It's no wonder I was stabbed in the back. Uh, I don't think that's related, actually. Gosh, this young woman seems to bend over backwards to put herself down. Seeing as we're here, we should ask her about what happened from her perspective, I suppose. Even though the trial's already over, but I guess it'd be good to hear. Suddenly be struck in the back by a blade as you were walking along the pavement. What a terrible experience you had, Miss Green. It was so cold that day, and the fog was so thick, I couldn't see a thing. That was four days ago now, I think. Is that right? Yes, that's right. I'm afraid you've been comatose all that time. But the case has been solved, hasn't it? While I've been here in the hospital, I mean. Indeed it has, my dear madam. Spectacularly, by none other than I, Sherlock Sholmes. Sit down. Mr. Sholmes, as you well know, it was Mr. Narahota's hard work in court that, so in court that solved the case. Are you yet to hear what happened, Miss Green? Yes, I'm afraid so. A gentleman from the police force is supposed to be coming to fill me in shortly. Oh, I see. Me coming round seems to have made everyone frantically busy. I'm so sorry. I should never have regained consciousness. It was selfish of me. Oh my god, no. Oh no, we're all so relieved that you're on the mend, Miss Green. Really, we are. With that kind of attitude, maybe your surname should be blue, not green. Eh. <laughs> So, you're an artist, are you, Miss Green? Oh, no, I couldn't possibly claim that. I'm a fledgling artist at best. I mean, I'm a student of art, really, at the Thorndike Academy of Fine Arts. Oh my, an Academy of Fine Arts? Great Britain is such a wonderful country. Uh, tell me, Miss Green, do you live hereabouts? Oh, no, actually. I don't deserve it, but I have a little flat on Brixton Road. I see. How very interesting. Oh no! Is it? Uh, Brixton is some ten stops away on the underground from here. And Thorndike Academy is a mere three minute walk from Brixton Town Centre. Does that matter, Mr. Sholmes? Perhaps not, but Briar Road is a far less salubrious part of town by comparison, dwelt in by those of inferior means. Including the Maleficent Mr. Mustache. Inferior means? I suppose the san does fit the bill. Yeah, I can't imagine he has too much money. It struck me as somewhat out of the ordinary for a young fine art student to be walking in such a district. That's all. Oh, what's this? She suddenly clammed up. Mr. Sholmes, you should be ashamed of yourself prying into a young maiden's private affairs. <laughs> Oh, dear me, do forgive me. Um, if you don't mind. I'm being discharged shortly, so I need to pack up my things. Oh, yes, of course, we won't keep you. Thank you so much, Miss Green. There's a fucking rat in here. Yeah, a mouse, Mr. Narohodo, an enormous mouse! Hmm, vermin in a hospital? That doesn't seem the best. But it looks like a very healthy specimen, doesn't it? It's very plump. I'm not sure we can say that's down to the excellence of this facility, if that's what you were thinking. Yeah, it means it's uh, well-fed. This must be a bag of Miss Green's personal belongings. She would have been brought directly here after she was found stabbed in the pavement, though. I expect a friend or family member probably brought some things for her. Alright then, let's see what's inside. Change of clothes, no doubt, and... No, Mr. Naruhodo, you must never scrutinize a young maiden's personal belongings. A young maiden might have chocolates, or biscuits, or caramel. Ryunosuke! Get out of there! <laughs> what are you, a dog looking for snacks? Jeez. Ah, oh, this looks like the patient's treatment notes. Let's see. Do not feed. What is this place, a zoo? Jesus Christ. You know, I seem to remember seeing an almost identical sign in our local park. For the 
pigeons, yes. This is a person. Poor woman. I hope she hasn't read this. Jeez, Zoice, this hospital fucking sucks. This rounded wooden figure isn't the most charming, is it? It's cute! Oh, I don't think that's a decoration, Mr. Naruhodo. It's an artist's mannequin, I believe. Used when practicing sketching the human form in all different poses. Really? It's not exactly what you'd call a typical figure for that purpose, though, is it? No, I suppose not. I confess I've never seen one quite so full-figured before. Well, if you want to draw a full-figured person, it's the right tool for the job. Honestly, I wish I could get a mannequin like that. Because all the ones you have are, like, super skinny. I wonder if it's uh, hard to pose at all. Look, there's a photograph in this frame here. Oh, oh yes, it's a picture of a young gentleman. Looks to be about the same age as Miss Green, I would say. And perhaps the young woman's special s oh, perhaps the young woman's special someone, do you think? My, my, Mr. Naruhodo. I didn't know you had such a sense for matters of the heart. Not in the least. I sincerely said the first thing I thought of. He's got the same bangs as her. I bet it's her brother or something. Is that Mr. Narrow Fodder here? Mr. Narrow Fodder? <laughs> Narrow Fodder now? Uh, well, um, if you're looking for Naruhodo the lawyer, that's me, but... Ah, Mr. Narrow Fodder, good. This is for you. It's a message for Mr. Saucy Nut Nutsmeg. Mr. Natsume? Send me a message to me? But why would a policeman be delivering a message from Mr. Natsume? Exactly. What's going on? Did he go and get arrested when we weren't looking? What's a Scotland Yard constable doing playing delivery boy at this time in the morning? Ah, uh, what are you waiting for? Let me see that. Oh. Well. This is most unexpected. Something wrong, Mr. Sholmes? Is something wrong, Mr. Sholmes, he says. Have you not seen this note? No, how could I have? It would seem that London's criminals have no intention of letting the great detective rest. A new case calls. A case of murder, no less. We must depart at once. Murder? Call a cab. Time is of the essence. But uh, the trouble is... We've yet to read Mr. Natsume's note. I was thinking we ought to pay him a visit in his lodgings once we did. That will be entirely convenient. Convenient? What do you mean? It's all here in the note, my dear fellows. The murder we must investigate took place at Mr. Mustache's lodgings. Oh? oh wait, what? I'll help you. A fiacre at once. What is that? I have never seen that word before in my life. A fancy car, perhaps? It was only yesterday that Soseki-san was in court and we were dispelling doubts about his innocence. And now, the very next day, there's a murder at the man's own address? He may very well be the unluckiest man alive. Or so it seemed to us at the time, but we were soon to discover it was worse than we thought. Oh, he did. It's that fucking guy, right? We saw him in the la in the previous game for like 30 seconds. What on earth? Oh my, the gentleman is deceased without question. He's dead. Uh, Locum student, Mr. Naruhodo Esquire. Mr. Natsume. Oh, why? Why is this happening? Why to me? I've only just got out of court yesterday! I was finally home after two days of misery! And then I wake up the next day to this? No early bird should catch a worm like this! A woeful worm without wiggle! I see you're in high spirits again this morning, Mr. Mustache. Yeah! Not the horrible Herlock Sholmes! Shoo! Shove off! Show yourself the door! I never invited you! Mr. Sholmes came here with us. I'm quite sure he'll be able to help you, Mr. Natsume. I am entirely at your disposal, Mr. Mustache. What can I do for you? 
Oh. What's up, you? Fucking Gregson. Tch. Here they are, already. The busybodies. Ah, Inspector Gregson. What a pleasant surprise. Not pleasant, is it? Gives me heartburn every time I see a face at a crime scene, Shelms. You give my- you- your face gives me heartburn. You fish and chips eating son of a bitch. I hate Gregson now, in case that's not woefully obvious. <laughs> He's a fucking dick. Ha! I deduce, Inspector, that your heartburn is a result of your excessive consumption of fried food. Um, good morning, Inspector. This is a crime scene. Don't you go touching anything. Or good morning to you too, sunshine. Hoo boy. This is quite a lot. A lot is happening. Oi! I said hands off! You're gonna mess up my crime scene! Oh, um, no, I just wanted to look, that's all. No chance! I know your kind! You'll mess it up just by looking at it! Ugh, someone's in a bad mood. There's certainly some bad air in here, isn't there? <laughs> Alright, it sounds like I'd better just talk to the inspector first and try to curry some favor. Alright, what the fuck do you have to say, Greg? So, Inspector, what was the victim's name? Who was he? Mr. Wi- <sighs> Mr. William Shamspear. <laughs> Holy shit. Of all the names, I feel like that is the best and worst thing you could have possibly named a character. Oh my god. <laughs> Incredible. Frankly. Mr. William Shamsphere. <laughs> I can't even say it without laughing. Fucking hell. He was a lodger here. As you can probably tell, he was an actor. Bit of a dead loss as it happens, or just dead. Gregson, have some respect. Mr. Shamspear. He was a landlord, old Mr. Garadab and the other lodger, Mr. Natsume, who found him. Fellow didn't rise at his usual hour, so Garadab got worried and kicked the door down. Uh, but doesn't Mr. Garadab have a bag leg? Oh yeah, you're right there. It's just that jittery Japanese hunchback over there who actually did the kicking. Uh, really? Sosaki-san? Oh look, he's wearing a uh, little wooden sandals with a suit. He's wearing like a fine wooden suit and the little wooden sandals. They probably click when he walks. Have you guys ever heard like, I think they're called Geta? Geta? I forget how you pronounce it, but um, they, they, they make a very satisfying sound when you walk on like a hardwood floor with them. It's fun. The victim was pretty hard up it seems. He even done some time inside for petty crimes. He had no money, no place to go, and no friends. His only acquaintances were the people in this house. A miserable life, and a miserable end to it. So, what exactly is Mr. Natsume still doing here? He's not involved in the investigation, so shouldn't you have sent him away from the crime scene? Well, I'm not saying it's because the fellow looks odd or anything, or they act suspicious. But I thought it would be prudent to take a statement from the culprit- I mean, cohabitor. You nearly said culprit there, didn't you? Oh dear. Mr. Natsume appears to be under suspicion again. Certainly seems that way. He does just come across as an odd fellow, doesn't he? Poor man. How unfortunate. Anyway, I can't say much until the coroner gets here. But I don't think the fellow's been a goner that long. The body's still warm. Even if the inspector would allow it, I don't think I would bring myself to touch a dead body. Okay. Well, let's talk to Natsume then. What a terrible thing to have happened. It's only been three days since I was arrested for the incident on the pavement outside. And then, having finally regained my freedom, it starts happening all over again. Endless existence of excruciating experiences. So, the victim lived here on the ground floor and your room is just one story up, isn't it? I have never seen stories spelled like that. Frickin' British spellings. Yes, that's right. In a way, we were neighbors, I suppose. So, did you know the victim? Were you friends? Uh, 
Uh-oh. That's- that sounds like trauma. What's the matter with Suseki-san now? It's just an innocent enough question, wasn't it? Why does he seem so shaken by it? Well, I, I suppose he wasn't a complete stranger, but, but he did in, uh, Did he ever invite me to his room? Never! On my honor, I swear it! You are sus AF, my dude. What an extreme reaction. You're probably wishing you'd never asked now, aren't you, Mr. Nadahodo? When we found him here, I felt wretched, which is why I sent word asking for you to come. Though that inspector over there... Sholmes! What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> cool pose, guy! What are you doing? <laughs> What's up, bruh? Act cat- th this looks- this looks like someone's walked into a room and- or, or no, someone was about to walk into a room and then somebody yelled, Everybody act natural! And then Sholmes does this. What are you doing, sir? Um, Mr. Sholmes, what are you doing? Ha! You need only observe to know it, my dear fellow. Investigating, naturally. Uh, there's nothing natural about that pose. Mr. Sholmes, have you made some miraculous discovery? Patience, my dear madam, patience. We've not been here in this room five minutes. So far, all I've managed to deduce is what actually happened. My goodness! But isn't that everything we need to know, Mr. Sholmes? Hmm. Now that you propose the idea, I believe one could indeed see it that way. At the present time, I have managed to draw two incontrovertible conclusions. The first is that there was a physical struggle here last night in which the victim fought for his life. Ah! ah! Mr. Natsume, what's wrong? Is something that Mr. Sholmes said significant somehow? N no I don't mind me. Forget I was here. And my second conclusion is that there was a poison linger in the, lingering in the air here last night that passed the victim's lips. N nonsense! Uh oh, that is quite a face, sir. All right, Mr. Natsume, why are you acting so extremely to Mr. Holmes's, Sholmes's deductions? N no, please, pretend I'm not here. Invis invis invisible, ineffable, inscrutable, insignificant. Impossible to ignore. You must tell us everything, Mr. Sholmes. Spare no detail. But of course. Let the theatrical tragedy before us be unraveled by my great deductions, presented for your pleasure, in two acts. I've heard some truly astounding great deductions from Mr. Sholmes in the past. No doubt this will be no exception. What miracles will unfold before our eyes this time? So, my dear fellows, for your delight and wonder, let the curtain rise. For Herlock Sholmes's logic and reasoning spectacular, Act 1. Let's fucking go! The game is afoot. Topic one, cause of death. God, that is quite some hair. Careful observation of the victim reveals to us the events that transpired in this disconsolate room last night. Foam at the mouth of the deceased clearly indicates the use of poison. Next to the victim, we notice a large dining plate, which contains, you will observe, one half a sizable bar of soap. Meaningful? Indubitably. Why is this soap set so purposefully upon the dish? Like the, victim la like the victim's last supper, in fact. Yes. Could it be that the man was about to eat it? Of course, the fork reveals the answer. You're so sick, you look so fucking done. It appears that the young man's appetite was his undoing. Taking up arms in the form of his cutlery, the victim engaged in a deadly battle for his life. Yet the struggle against this hunger was in vain, for in the end, he couldn't resist the devouring the slippery feast. Gross. With London's foul soap is besmirched by foul poison. Yes, the victim's life was claimed by poison that tainted the contents of the plate. The soap and the lather about the young man's mouth are too perfectly matched to ignore. The cause of death was clearly 
intoxication due to excessive ingestion of foul soap. Though, personally, I have a greater interest in the taste of foul candle wax, of course. What are you... There are just words coming out of your mouth, sir. Poisoning from soap ingestion. Okay. Suicide or murder. The cause of death identified, we proceed to Act 2, where we ponder the next question. Was this suicide or murder? The audience will recall that death occurred during the victim's last supper. Did the man dine and die alone? This single teacup suggests the answer. To draw a conclusion on such a meagre evidence would be foolish, however, certainly. The careful criminal could have absconded with his own cup to cover his tracks. Well, allow me to lift the veil of doubt, my dear fellow. Indeed, what reveals the answer, of course, is the broken lock. But they busted the lock to get into the room. Though forced open now, at the time of the incident, this door was locked. And the sole key was in the victim's pocket. In other words, when the victim consumed the poison, he must have been alone. Alone with his inferior soap from whence wafted an inferior scent. And with that acrid aroma lingering in the air, the victim met his end in tragic solitude. We can take comfort only in the fact that his soul was well cleansed on its way to the hereafter. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Sholmes. No possible perpetrator present. Okay, sure. Thus concludes the final act of Herlock Sholmes' Great Deduction. There's just one thing, Mr. Sholmes. You are disposed to identifying just one thing, aren't you, Mr. Nutterhodo? Pray, what concerns you? Well, no matter how hungry he was, do you really think the man would have eaten soap? It is quite apparent that this man had barely a penny to his name. It is a curious thing, but, one's to but to one so destitute, soap can suddenly appear quite irresistibly advertising. How extraordinary! In truth, I have tried a little soap in the past. You've eaten it, you mean? My dear fellow, it was some time ago now. My postulation was it was to cleanse my gut. Sholmes, no. All those, like, fucking detox diets are all shams. Don't do it. And did it? As I ride the agony on the floor and spilled the contents of my stomach, yes, I believe it did. Sholmes, no. The experience taught me a valuable lesson. Soap is quite poisonous. Dumbass. Has an unpleasant taste and leads to great discomfort. In summary, I cannot recommend it. Believe me, I wouldn't eat it even if you did. It is a miracle this man is still alive. Whomst is he? There's something that troubles me as well, actually. Oh, what's that? It's Mr. Natsume. He's being sus AF. Huh. I couldn't help noticing him shuddering and quivering out of the corner of my eye. Almost as if Mr. Sholmes' deduction touched a nerve somehow. N n nonsense Well, that clenched teeth episode didn't last. I think, judging by Mr. Natsume's reaction, the great detective deductions may need some gentle corrections in order to reach the actual truth. Yes, Mr. Sholmes' observations and deductions are sometimes a little too sharp. He has a tendency to hit the nail with the side of the head and drive it in at an obtuse angle. When he does that, it falls to us to straighten things out. Alright then, let's see what we can do. Yes, we must pick out the key words in Mr. Sholmes' quite brilliant deductions and discreetly exchange them for something that makes a little more sense. If we can do that... I'm sure we'll arrive at what Mr. Sholmes has meant to say in the first place. In that case, are you ready for the second performance of the day? On go do. On go do. Once again, my dear fellows, for your continued delight and wonder, let the curtain rise. For Herlock Sholmes' logic and reasoning spectacular. Act 1. Let's fucking go! Hold it, Mr. Sholmes! Alright, let's do this shit. 
careful observation of the victim. Da -da 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 -da. From with the mouth of the deceased clearly indicates the use of poison. Next to the victim, we notice a large dining plate. Sizable bar of soap. Meaningful? Indubitably. Why is the soap set so perfectly upon the dish? Like the victim's last supper, in fact. Yes. Could it be that the man was about to eat it? Of course, the fork reveals the answer. Well, you can't deny that a fork implies the man was eating something, or about to eat something. Yes, that's true. If I were to decide to eat some soap, I should prefer to use a fork than attempt it with chopsticks. And, of course, only half the bar of soap is left on the plate. But might there not be some other explanation? Something material that proves whether or not the man really ate some soap. I mean, he had, like, foam on his mouth, but it's not gonna let us... I would say, like, are there bite marks in the, uh... What's that? Like, are there bite marks in it? I suppose you'd eat soap with a fork, wouldn't you? I don't think it's a question of which implement you'd use. You shouldn't eat soap full stop. But then why? Why does a man have a fork in his hand? Oh dear, I understand your frustration, Mr. Nadohodo, but please don't take it out on me. The point is, if we decide the man used his fork to eat the soap, we sh wouldn't be changing Mr. Sholmes' deduction. So we really ought to consider some other clues. Yeah, I know, I'm looking at it. Do you think he was drinking tea with the soap? The cup's empty, so there's no way of knowing. Ah, how about this for an idea? Perhaps the cup was full of water. And he was dissolving the soap in it so he could gulp down as much as possible. Please remember that he may not actually have been a soap lover that he's been made out to be. Aha! There it is. Take that! I love the spinnies! Could it be that the man was about to eat it? Of course, the other piece of soap reveals the answer. It being the other half of the soap on the t it being the other half of the soap on the table. In short, the victim was not eating soap at all. But it's obvious, really. But no depths of hunger could drive any man to attempt to eat soap. Are you sure about that, Sholmes? Are you sure about that? I love Ryu's face. He's like, dude. You literally just said. Even I, with my unquenchable thirst for practical knowledge, took only a single bite. He's so dumb! It's quite the soap opera. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> uh, but that begs the question of how the man was poisoned, because there's no sign of any food on the table. An excellent observation, Mr. Nadahodo, and one that furnishes us with the answer we seek. For London's foul soap is me smirched by foul poison. This victim's life was claimed by poison that tainted the contents of the plate. Mr. Sholmes is still pushing the soap argument then. Perhaps he's suggesting the man licked the soap rather than ate it. Soap in London is that poisonous. I don't think I want to be washing my hands with it. But there are no signs of any food in this room at all. Of course, food isn't the only thing that passes people's lips, is it? I'm going to say the teacup. Take that! Yes, the victim's life was claimed by poison that tainted the teacup. Indeed, cups have been the vessel of choice for practicing poisoners over the centuries. And it would appear that this victim drank every last drop. There's no sign of food anywhere in the room. He just pops up in the background! Which leads us to the immutable conclusion. The cause of death was clearly intoxication due to the ingestion of poison contained in this teacup. The cause of death identified. Was it suicide or murder? Call the death occurred during the of last supper. Did the man dine and die alone? Single teacup suggests the answer. 
Ah, the western vessel for infused hot drinks again. It's already featured heavily in our deduction so far. Yes, we can imagine that so shortly before his death, Mr. Shams- I forgot that was his name! Mr. Shamspear was having a drink of tea. And there would be nothing remarkable about that, but what troubles me is Mr. Natsume's reaction when he heard Shulm suggest it. There's more to this deduction than it seems. We must closely examine the scene of the crime again for some clues. Oh, hey, look at that. Take that! Did the man dine and die alone? This other teacup suggests the answer. Yes, there were two teacups in this room all along. Ah. Uh, in other words, this is a strong indication that at the victim's last supper, there was a guest present. At the very least, we can say now with certainty that somebody else was here in this room last night taking tea with the victim. What are you talking about? Utterly, unbelievably, unjustly, unreasonable! To draw a conclusion on such meager evidence would be foolish, however, certainly. In which case, what more can we deduce about this possible guest at the table? Well, allow me to lift the veil of doubt, my dear fellow. Do you mean to say you know exactly who it was in this room at the time of the victim's death? Indeed. What reveals the answer, of course, is the broken lock. I'm not sure I like where this deduction is going now. I'm afraid it's too late to go back to the halcyon days of eating too much soap. But the identity of the guest who was here last night when the victim passed away is... something I have a very bad feeling about. Well, you can try to ignore your feelings, but we cannot ignore the truth, Mr. Naruhoto. No, I suppose not. Time to have a look around again. At first glance, it seems that the only things in this room are the makeshift stage and the costumes. I overlooked these three books initially. I wonder what they are. Let's see, the titles read... The Picture of Monsieur Lecoq, uh, Canterbury Yearnings, and A Meal for Gaboriel. Yeah, those are the books from the last trial. Wait, I'm sure I've heard those titles before. It could just be an incredible coincidence, but they're the exact same three books that Mr. Natsume purchased the other day. What? Yes, on the day of the unfortunate incident when Miss Green was stabbed. So Seki-san had just been to a bookshop and bought them, that's right. And now those three titles are here in the room of the victim. Yet Mr. Natsume claims to have never been here before. What does this mean, do you think? I, I really don't know what to make of it. Take that! Indeed. What reveals the answer, of course, is the pile of familiar books. Quite so. It's no mere coincidence that these three titles are here in this room. It's the link to the truth. Aw. Huh. Mr. Natsume, you purchased these books four days ago at a second-hand bookshop. But that's just a coincidence. In that case, you will be able to bring up the same three titles from your own room, will you not? This very moment. No, never, non-negotiable! If you can't bring your own copies here, it proves that these three books are in fact yours. <laughs> what is that pose? Having purchased the books four days ago and returned to your lodgings, you were arrested the very next day. The very next day, bum 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 bum. So you could conceivably have brought the books here on that evening, but you never mentioned that. In other words, you could have only brought these three books here to the victim's room. The fucking poses. Oh, there he goes. He's on his way. <laughs> Last night, having returned to your lodgings after the trial concluded at the Old Bailey. Ha! Hum! Ha! In short, there is only one possible conclusion. The victim died here in his room last night as a result of poisoning. 
that same night, the victim had a visitor. And that visitor... was you, Mr. Soseki Natsume. Thus concludes the final act of Herlock Sholmes' Great Deduction. Woof. This is going great so far. Good work, boys. Woohoo. Although I will say the whole soap poisoning argument just makes me think of Christmas story. It was soap poisoning. No. God, like that whole thing. We watch that movie every year at my house. <laughs> not again, not again, not again, not again. Well then, Mr. Natsume. Would appear you're gonna have to accompany me down to the yard again. But, 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 but wait! Hold your horses! Yes. Door! Key! Locked! Entry! Exit! Entirely impossible! So flustered is being even a stranger than normal. What? You think that's an alibi? You could have just made a copy. What? You live in the same building, after all. You've had plenty of opportunity, I'm sure. But, but, but misery me! Sorry, sir. You'll get your chance to give your side of the story later. Facts speak for themselves, Mr. Mustache. Uh, you, you, you horrible hairlock Sholmes! He really has found himself an arch rival now, hasn't he? Come on now, no dilly dallying. Outside, there's a carriage waiting. Miss Locum student, Mr. Naruhodo Esquire! Uh, I never imagined I'd be in this position again, but... You have to help me! Please, please, I am innocent! Alright, I understand. We'll come to your cell later and talk about it. And one more thing. Oh, yes? My, my poor little kitty cat. Please give him his breakfast for me! Aw, oh, do we go get to say hi to the kitty? Sorry, you're getting arrested. Hey, where's your cat? And so... His evil curse still apparently unbroken. Soseki-san found himself once again the prime suspect in a case of murder. Again. Round two. Thanks to the incriminating deduction of the great detective. My dear fellow, that honor belongs to you. Yeah, we, di we did help with that, didn't we? Oh well. Well, at least that means Inspector Gregson is no longer here. We can examine the crime scene in more detail now. Yes, that's right. Eh, uh, and of course... What? Have you forgotten what the inspector mentioned before? It was the landlord, Mr. Garadab, who discovered Mr. Shamsphere. Ah, Mr. John Garadab, yes. My favorite character. I expect we could find him in the sitting room at the top floor as usual. Right, must remember and go up talk to him later then. All right, let's look at a dead body. Oh, the poor man. So young to die. Do you suppose it was a very painful death, being poisoned as he was? I don't know. All I can do now is hope he'll be reborn to a better life. Yes, I suppose you're right. I wonder. Do you think that putting our hands together in a Japanese prayer will help a British soul? Sorry? I made sure I had a reference at the ready for just such an occasion as this, actually. This book is entitled The Beginner's Guide to Praying for the Departed, The British Way. <laughs> okay. I'll just reread it now. One moment. There's quite a spine on that book, isn't there? Oh boy. Alrighty. Look at these extravagant bright costumes. Somehow they look almost out of place in this room, with its grim, shady goings-on. This one looks like a king's attire. A king? I've always dreamt of being a king. Oh, I think you'd be more suited to a feudal lord, a daimyo or such like. With a chonmage topknot? Every Japanese man wishes he had a chonmage. Oh, you'd look wonderful with one, and you already have the sword. 
Can you imagine what would happen if I walked around the streets of London with a chonmage and a sword? Well, you're already halfway there, my friend. No, oops. And there's not much on these shelves, is there? Just this wine glass and bottle. And both of them are cracked. Yes, not much use, are they? Well, what's the matter? Oh, I was just reminded of the Reaper, that's all. Prosecutor Lord Van Zykes? Yes, he's so reckless with his wine glasses. I was thinking that it's a waste and he should donate some to the needy. I can suggest it next time we meet. <laughs> I want to make a meme. You guys know that format where it's like a Twitter post of it's a guy like breaking down his monthly budget and it's like food, $100, electricity, $60, um, candles, $36,000. I was like, please help me budget this, my family is dying. And then someone in the replies goes, spend less on candles. And then he's just like, no. I want to make that, but with Van Zoinks. Where it's like, food, so-and-so, um, electricity, so-and-so, wine and wine glasses, $36,000. Please help me budget this, my family is dying. Stop throwing wine bottles around the courtroom. No. <laughs> As we've seen from the outside, the window is completely bricked up. A vestige of the former window tax that Britons had to pay. What strange things they used to tax in Great Britain. I mean, making people pay for the number of windows they had in their property? It's extraordinary. It's heartbreaking to think of the poor having to block up their windows just to avoid an un unaffordable tax. Oh! What is it, Miss Uzato? If you look closely... The number of- a number of these bricks are loose. Oh? Soap? Oh, yeah, it looks as though an amateur has broken out a few of them just here. Was it Mr. Shamsbury who did it, I wonder? Being the lodger renting this room. Ah, look at this, Mr. Narahodo. On the outside, there's a little ledge. And there's something on it. What, outside? It's so cold outside, you can feel it through this gap. It did snow all last night. It would be cold. More importantly, what is it on the ledge out there? What are those snow-covered lumps? It's more bars of soap. Soap? What are bars of soap doing lined up on a ledge outside the window? I have no idea. But the pair of them look rather charming like that. Still, that's very strange, isn't it? Bars of soap lined up outside the window. I think perhaps we should take one. There are two, after all. Oh dear. I, I suppose we could. Oh, what's this? Look here at this soap. Ah. Do you see? In the middle there? There's a patch that's a different color. It's sort of transparent, but... Some sort of fancy design, I suppose. Only in Great Britain. It looks like the Hinomaro flag of Japan, doesn't it? How wonderful! Probably a very expensive brand. Expensive? And what's it doing in this ramshackle old room? Hmm. Interesting. I'll look at that later. This box is trying to catch my attention. And here we have another disproportionately large machine. Looks like a meter of some kind. Ah, this is a gas meter, I think. Seems that in this district, residents pay for gases they use it with coins. Ah, I see. Yes, now that you've pointed it out, you see that there's a slot just there that looks like it would take a coin. So you mean, if you put a coin in here... That's right. That would buy you about two hours of gas for lights and heating. So, if you were a poor person with no money, you'd have to sleep in the freezing cold? Yes, or if you were a scatterbrand with no change because you forgot to exchange your money at the bank. Thank goodness there's no meter in our office. Is that real? Is that a real thing that they had to do? Gas vending machine? Jesus. This is some sort of makeshift stage, I think, isn't it? Where does the audience sit, though, for the nightly Shakespeare performances? Actors aspiring to the great stage must practice their art, Mr. Narahodo, with or without an audience. In fact, on a related note, perhaps you should set up a mock bench for the defense in your office. What? But then you could practice your art every single day. 
I'll think about it. If you promise to don a beard and play the role of a judge. Well, if, if that would help you achieve your goal. This I have to see. This is a gaslit wall light, isn't it? Must be connected to a gas pipe in the wall. Gas lights, a gas stove. London really is a city of gas. Now that I think about it, Mr. and Mrs. Garrett have had an open fire in the top floor, didn't they? Oh, yes, you're right. I don't recall seeing a gas stove up there. Well, I much prefer a real fire anyway. So much cozier. Hmm. Anything else over here? No. 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 What's that? Something very thin and hard to miss, or easy to miss on the floor. What's this? Looks like a part of an envelope, I think. Yes, I think you may be right. Perhaps it was torn off when the letter was opened. Is that significant? Well, it's a little out of place, perhaps. When you look around the room, there's no sign of a letter or the rest of the envelope, in fact, is there? Ah, she's right. And yet, here we have the torn off end of an envelope. It just strikes me as unusual. I agree. We better take this just in case. Anything else? Anything else? Still can't get over Sham Spear though, Jesus Christ. Alright, I think we're done in here. Okay, let's go upstairs. Oh, hey, clean it up. Nice. Here we are again. The eccentric landlord's eccentric top floor abode. We're here because Mr. Garadub's the one who discovered the incident this morning. Don't forget. What's up? Ah, you chaps, eh? Uh, yes, good morning, sir. Thank you for your cooperation and call yesterday. It was quite a trial. As much for Mr. Garadub as anyone, really. Came straight back here after all that business at the Bailey yesterday. Didn't expect to wake up to more bally nonsense this morning. I wonder, if you wouldn't mind telling us exactly what happened, Mr. Garadub? Yes, I suppose you'd like to know all about that dead loss of an active chap in the ground floor room. Those were exactly Inspector Gregson's words, weren't they? talk to him. It must have been a real shock for you this morning. I hear that you discovered what had happened. Ah, well, that hopeless act of, ch act of chap rises at five o'clock sharp every morning without fail. But at 5.30 this morning, he still hadn't lit the gas. So I went down and knocked on his door. With no bally answer. And that's when you broke into his room by kicking down the door? Well, I called on that rum-looking Japanese chap to do the grunt work, of course. Wasn't it a little premature to kick the door down? The man could have just overslept by half an hour. That's very true, Mr. Natahodo. If 30 minutes is oversleeping warranted such behavior, I'd have to kick your do door down every morning. Well, um, you know, better to be safe than sorry and all that. Is it just me or is he avoiding our gaze now all of a sudden? Sus. I that it was a sorry situation indeed when you that you found on the far side of the door. Shamspear. I cannot get over that name. The victim's name is Mr. Shamspear, I believe. Is that right? Yes, William Shamspear. Took the ground floor room three months ago now. And how would you describe him? In a word, destitute. Destitute? Well, let's face it, the only redeeming feature of that room is the cheap rent. Anyone wanting to live in a place like that is either broke or has bally screw loose. So it's hard to choose which categories this Soseki-san would fall into. Mr. Natahodo, that's a little rude. He was doing research as well. Research? Into what? Shakespeare, of course. Shakespeare! 
Read a few plays of the old bard myself, yo. Romeo and Hamlet and all that. Uh-huh, sure you did. Yes, William Shakespeare is England's most highly regarded classical playwright and author. He's known as Sao in Japanese, you know? Um, Sao? And many of his works have already been translated. It seems incredible that Shakespeare was shortened as Sao, though. Someone was too heavy-handed there. There were a lot of costumes in the victim's room, actually, weren't there? Of course, Mr. Hatsume is a scholar of English literature as well. I imagine he and Mr. Shakespeare would have had much in common. Shakespeare interpretation disagreement leads to shocking murder. Let's hope it's not that. Mr. Naruhodo, really, how rude. After Mr. Natsume's trial yesterday, you came straight back here, I believe, didn't you? Did you notice anything strange between then and this morning? Well now, must have been about six in the evening by the time I got home. It was coming down rather heavily, as I remember, and it was completely dark already. That failed actor chap was out at the time. Scared of notice there was no light in his room or something, I suppose. Couldn't summon the energy for anything much, so I just sat in front of the fire up here. It was up to eight before Shamspear got back. And the chap was up until past one in the morning, I'll have you know. Suppose he met his end sometime after that. I was asleep by then, so I'm rather in the dark here. Well, thank you. That was all very illuminating. Is everything all right, Miss Suzato? Well, I was just thinking. It's a little strange, that's all. Oi, no bonking. Mr. Garrida, you were up here in your room all evening, if I've understood correctly. Not a big fan of stairs. Not with his blasted leg. Then... How is it that you seem to know? The precise movements of your tenant on the ground floor, I mean. Gah! That's a very good point. I can't imagine that you could hear noises from the ground floor all the way up here. Does this old man like to spy on his tenants? Is that it? I mean, we kind of... We kind of figured that out in the first case. I I say, I know what you're thinking, and it's bully outrage. I'm ex-military, don't you know? I don't go around spying on my tenants, why would I? And then how did you know, Mr. Garrett? Up? It's a gas, woman! The gas tells me everything! The the gas? What on earth do you mean, sir? How can the gas tell you anything, let alone everything? Well, as you're probably aware, the gas is supplied to the building by pipes. Yes, I'd more or less worked that out. Every room in the building is connected by a single pipe to the gas main outside. And the gas company supplies gas to the properties via the main. Yes, I understand that too. Let me see if I can explain. Let's say I was to light the gas lamps up here. What do you suppose would happen? Well, obviously the room would get brighter. Exactly. But at the same time... The lights in all the other rooms of the house would dim for a moment. What? They dim? Why? Perhaps it's because when you light a gas lamp, it briefly uses more gas than usual. And that reduces the amount of gas in the pipe for other lamps that are connected to it. That might explain why the other lamps dim momentarily, mightn't it? Yes, of course, because everything's connected to a single supply pipe. Is that supposed to happen, though? It sounds rather undesirable. Surely good point. Fact is, the gas it's the gas company's pipes in these parts are pretty hopeless. Long worn out. And I barely got any gas to the, into them to begin with. Opposite's also true, of course. Extinguish the lamps up here and they glow brighter in the rest of the house. Ah, right, I see. So by watching the flickering of the lamps in one room, you can determining what's you can determine what's happening elsewhere. You've got it. Oh, of course, because when people come back home in the evening and before they go to sleep at night, what they're guaranteed to do is either light or put out their lamps and fires. Clever. In point of fact, the room on the ground floor and one of th and the one above it use slightly different amounts of gas. By watching the lights in here closely, I can work out almost exactly what's going on in the whole house. Gosh, that's fascinating, Mr. Garadib. Absolutely fascinating. Oh well, nothing to it really. I can't really see it's going to help us with the case either. But I'd like to know. 
It's why Mr. Garadov is so interested in what his tenants are up to in the first place. I feel like there's more to it than idle curiosity. Sus AF. Let's see if there's anything to examine in here. You know what the screen is hiding now? The aftermath of the fiery altercation the other day. <laughs> Don't suppose I'll be able to clear that mess up for some time now. Oh dear, this must be a very difficult situation for you. I'll say. People talk about twists of fate and whatnot. But this is a twist and a half! A rotten show all around! Clearly struggling with everything that's happened. Anything else worth looking at? Just stuff on the walls. Books. Oh! A copy of Rance Magazine! The Adventures of Herlock Sholmes is being read all over London. Isn't it wonderful? Naturally, one asks oneself if such a singular detective could really exist. Having met the chap, it's undeniable. He is most certainly singular. Singularly dangerous. That's genuine public opinion for you, Miss Uzato. Perhaps it should be reflected in the stories. Make no mistake, Mr. Naruhodo. I intend to snuff out the sort of public opinion we just heard, personally. I'm starting to see where Mr. Sholmes' untainted reputation comes from now. Anything else worth looking at in here? I don't think so, probably not. There's a good view of the wintry east end from up here. It's an oppressively grey scene, there's really nothing comparable in Japan. And down below, Briar Road, partly blanketed in snow. And the pavement where poor Mrs. Green was struck in the back by that knife. Thinking about it, this is the only room in this building that actually has a window to the outside world. Sometimes Great Britain really does seem like a strange land, doesn't it? I suppose all foreign cultures seem strange at first. Imagine how an Englishwoman would feel upon arriving in Japan and seeing people with a chonmage topknot. Well, that's a good point. Alright, let's get out of here. Okay. Nothing here. Nothing here. Hmm. Where is everybody? <laughs> The freaking ghost town! No one's here! Ah! Was there maybe something on the other side of the road that I just didn't see? I forgot to look. A snowman. Hmm. Maybe there was something up there I was supposed to examine. Oh yeah, I haven't actually like looked at any of the stuff I grabbed, have I? different color. It's an exquisite design, isn't it? Trust the British to turn a boring bar of soap into something special. I quite like it. It reminds me of the Hinomaru design of the Japanese flag. I expect this is rather expensive soap. That doesn't seem likely, given who it belongs to. Hmm. Anything else? Whoever opened this envelope didn't bother with a letter opener or scissors, did they? Yes, whoever opened it was clearly someone with an unrefined temperament. And judging from the angle of the rip here, the person in question must have been right-handed. Miss Uzato. I think perhaps someone's been reading too much of the adventures of Sh Sherlock Sholmes. You can never read too much of it, Mr. Nadahodo. Never. Cuties. Do you have anything to say about this soap, sir? Probably not. No. He has nothing to say to me. Okay, fine. Gonna look at more stuff in your house, though. 
Ah, yes, those enormous mortar shells. It's quite something seeing them up so close, isn't it? Didn't you say something about firing them into the barracks, Mr. Garadub? Ah, you remember, do you? Just a little mishap that occurred during training one day. What are you doing firing on your own men? The captain bellowed at me. I'm not surprised. A little mishap doesn't really do it justice, does it? Well, one has these little incidents when one's a hot, hot, yetted, hot, 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 hot headed young private. Perhaps I should put some evidence that resulted from one of my little mishaps on display. Oh, does the great lawyer, like the great detective, want to exhibit some trophies of his finest moments? <laughs> That's your military uniform, isn't it, Mr. Garadib? Well, ceremonial garb, yes. Been hanging on the wall ever since my retirement bash. Not in active service now, you know. Doesn't mean much to me anymore. You could have the old thing if you wanted it. Well, it might suit Lord Van Zeeks, perhaps. An overly ostentatious outfit like this could be just what he needs. Very tactful, Miss Suzato. Very tactful indeed. There's a single apron drawing on that enormous cannon-shaped clothes horse. Look. No, no, Mr. Naruhodo. That's a real cannon. I knew that. I was just testing you. Piece of history, that is. Seen plenty of action on the battlefield, I can tell you. I still want to know how they got it up the stairs. Now the old girl and I are just enjoying the peace and quiet of retirement together. And of course, she'd come in handy if the enemy decided to launch an attack again. Is there a war going on that I don't know about? That's an impressive collection of cakes on that fancy silver cake stand there. I feel sure that it was full of cakes when we first investigated in here as well. Yes, quite right. Haven't touched it since. Haven't done much at all, really, since it happened. Time's rather stood still for me, you know. Oh. If time has stood still? Now that's an interesting phrase. I might be able to use that excuse when I'm next supposed to be tidying up the office. You could just tidy up, Mr. Naruhodo. These shelves look like they've been completely torn apart by a wild beast. <laughs> Reminds me of the Battle of Maywin, don't you know? Ha, ah, the experiences of a seasoned veteran. And then we had us surrounded on all sides. Really thought we were done for, the whole bolly company. We've been taking a real pounding from that cannon, so all we could do was run for our lives. Oh, I thought that story was going to end in a different direction, actually. Well, the whole experience taught me one thing, I can tell you. When you're done for, you're really done for. Ugh, that's not what a lawyer who often finds himself under fire wants to hear. Okay, is there anything else in here? Anything else? I don't think so. Off I go again! Why do I get the feeling that Sholmes is like hiding in a corner over here? Oh, not move. Uh, examine. Where's my man's? Not here. Damn it. Iris? Iris is here! Hi, sweetie! Um, Iris? Oh, she's working. That's incredible concentration, that is. I find it quite remarkable how she can focus on so many different things at once. Perhaps I should try drinking more herbal tea. Third blend from the right would be good for you, Runo. Oh, um, Iris? This girl is destined for great things, I'm sure. She's working. She's working. Okay, not to be disturbed. Got it. Um... Okay. Where haven't we really looked? Is there nobody at the prison? Spending so much time. Uh -huh. Okay, we already looked at everything here. We already looked at everything in here. Um, let's check around here, I guess. Anything to look at? Bike. I'm just gonna see what happens because I want to find the next bit of the plot. <laughs> Talking about the shitty bike. Uh, 
Yeah, the uh, the only evidence I have are the two things we picked up and then these two things, which were in the trial already. So there's nothing else really to look at. Hmm. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Um, you can see, like, the little, uh, I can't actually look at them, I guess, but you can see, like, the little green things on the, uh, outer window. The little soaps. Um. Hmm. Is there something in here I missed, maybe? Hmm. Probably missing something, but I don't know what I'm missing. Everybody left. Okay, we already did this. Okay, it doesn't actually let me look any closer. I mean, I just checked the evidence. There's freaking nothing there. Um. Hmm. I mean, I, I looked at both of them, and it's, it's not giving me anything else. I already looked at that, and I already looked at the envelope. There is nothing. Besides, I don't know what that would do. Casually murdered that man. Listen, we've already <laughs> Listen, we, we 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 finished investigating the crime scene already, so he he's just chilling there unguarded for the time being, I suppose. Okay, can't even do anything here. Um, we are already here. We haven't done much in here, but she's not there anymore. So there's uh not really much else to look at. Unless maybe one of, like, she's got her stuff on the bed, but no, I can't even click on that. Hmm. Oh, feel like we need to spend a little more time investigating here? What are we missing? Because I'm not seeing any more investigation prompts. Maybe can I look at him more? Can I, can I look at his body closer? We already did this bit. No. Okay, we are clearly missing something in here. Watch what? What are we missing? Combing this room. Combing it. Fine toothedly. Fucking there. There it is. Jesus Christ. Ah, one of the teacups that Mr. Shamspear and his guests drank from last night. But don't go drinking from them, Mr. Naruhoto. There's bitter poison inside. I'm not planning on drinking any, don't worry. Anyway, the cups are both empty. That's true. So, one was Mr. Shamspear's. I still can't get over that goddamn name. And the other must be the cup that Mr. Natsume was drinking from. But Soseki-san wasn't poisoned, of course. Perhaps we should take these so we can examine them in more detail later. Okay, gimme. Okay, now the story shall progress. Thank freaking god. Oh, who is this? Is this Gregson again? Looks like you're having a good snoop around, eh? Yes. What's up, bowler hat motherfucker? I Inspector Gregson, back so soon? After I threw that little Japanese fella in the clink, I went and reported this to the investigation division. In five minutes times, this place will be cordoned off by the yard. Oh, I see. Well, we'd better be leaving then. Poor Mr. Natsume must be feeling very low being back in a cell again so soon. Oh, uh, uh, um, 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 okay! What? <laughs> uh, um... <laughs> 
Did anyone actually check his pulse or anything in the time that he's been standing there? Did anyone check that he was actually dead? What's wrong, Mr. Naruhodo? <laughs> oh god. Now I have to do this punk's voice. Oh wow, look at him. He's so frilly. Hmm. Need a voice for a pompous dude. Who's he? <laughs> um... Out! Out, brief candle! Life's but a walking shadow, a poor player! He's dabbing. That struts and frets his, his hour upon the stage, and then is heard no more. Seriously, did no one check his corpse? Or his, uh, pulse? Now, how soundeth the next part? <laughs> uh, tis a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Indeed! Oh, happy day! <laughs> Uh, it, 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 dude? Walking Dead? <laughs> Rinosuke, that show won't come out for decades. <laughs> it's early 1900s. Go nasally for guys like this? That's true. If I ever have to do- if, if that actually killed him, uh, then I won't ever have to do his voice again, but we'll see. The, the fella isn't dead at all? What was that nonsense he was saying, though? Boy crumpled like a Skyrim player. <laughs> He's got the uh, ragdoll physics down pat. I think, yes, it was from Milli William Shakespeare's Macbeth. A soliloquy from Act 5, Scene 5. Shakespeare. So it was that the victim, Mr. William Shamspear, came back to life. If the man had indeed been poisoned, it transpired that it hadn't killed him. He was taken by emergency carriage to a nearby hospital for treatment. And an Inspector Gregson evicted us from the scene of the crime. Whatever that was now. A mystery! I was about to say, hi, Sholmes, but you're not Sholmes! You're a different person wearing, like, a yellowy outfit. Who are you? You're not Sholmes! Get out of here! Whatever do you think will happen now? Good question. What a strange situation for Mr. Natsume. Arrested for murder, but then the victim comes back to life. I think perhaps the victim was never dead in the first place. It seems very likely that Mr. Shamspear did not- did consume poison, as we deduced. But it was an accident, attempted suicide, or attempted murder. Until the truth can be established, I imagine the police will keep Mr. Natsume in custody. I suppose so. Let's hope it doesn't come to anything more than a night in the cells. Yeah, uh, there's a lot happening right now. Oh, what's this? Homst? Oh, it's that other guy from the last game who we'd never learned his name. If it's a dumb pun about Shakespeare again, I will scream. What's that man doing over there? Looks like he's trying to see into Soseki-san's lodgings. Something wrong, Mr. Naruhodo. Um, excuse me, could we have a word? Eh! <laughs> Who the fuck are you? He just ran off. Cool, I don't have to do a voice for him. <laughs> I feel sure that I've seen that man somewhere before. Where was it? Uh, exactly here, like three days ago. Hmm, I do too, but I don't remember. Well, we've done as much investigating here as we can, I think. Perhaps we ought to get to the prison and speak with Mr. Natsume again. A good idea. Alright, let's go. We got the plot rolling. Yeehaw! Oh, sad men. Uh, doing a... Blair Witch in the corner over there. I guess it's not the corner. Uh, it is a wall, though. Uh... Look, Mr. Naruhodo. Mr. Natsume, have the police finished questioning you now? Hello, come student, Mr. Naruhodo Esquire! Oh, uh, yes? What is he? Tell me! Is he a ghost? Is he here to haunt me? 
Uh, let me guess. You're talking about Mr. Sholmes? He actually calls himself a great detective, Mr. Natsume. Not a ghost. But, but his diabolic deductions! They're not of this world! They've... they've... they've left me! Ha! Ah, cursed! I'm cursed, I tell you! Well, that sort of hurts. Credit where credit is due, Mr. Narohodo. You were heavily involved in the, in the deduction, too. Uh, yes, um, moving on. We have some wonderful news! Oh! And the victim that we all thought was dead has come back to life again because no one checked his pulse, turns out! And now, in the absolutely worst case, he could only be tried for attempted murder. That's... great, isn't it, Mr. Natsume? It's terrible! Oh! I'm stuck in this cell, suffering for some silly wrong end of the stick! You did it, didn't you? Confess, you're a killer! Why the mustache? Constant questions! I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, that shellfish... Selfish shyster! Make up your mind! Are you dead or alive? If you were going to come back to life, why bother dying? Wickedly wishy-washy William? Well, it seems likely that Mr. Shamsphere was never actually dead in the first place. Ha, huh, yes, that make makes sense. And I'm pleased that he's alive, of course. A lively debate last night was much fun. I'd be sad to think if it was our last. Oh! Oops. Um, Mr. Natsume, does this mean... You did see the victim last night? You met with Mr. Shamsphere, didn't you? I'm not saying another word! I demand to have a lawyer present! Uh, I am your lawyer? Who do you think I am? Please, Mr. Natsume, we need to hear your side of the story. Ugh, why am I cursed like this? Alright, mustache, talk. Can you tell us exactly what happened last night then, Mr. Natsume? There's nothing to tell! But, Mr. Narohodo Esquire, I'm eternally grateful to you for helping me with that accursed case yesterday. A case that saw poor Miss Green hospitalized after she ended up with a knife in her back. It's hard to believe that was only yesterday. After the trial was over, I trudged my weary way back to my lowly lodgings. And that evening, at past nine it must have been, I visited Mr. Shamspear. So, you did go to the victim's room then? As we feared. I didn't do anything wrong! I'd never been to his room before, it was the first time! Then, what made you decide to go? I bumped into him when I arrived back at the house. We got chatting and it developed into a discussion. But he had to go out, so I bade him farewell. That ties in with what Mr. Garadub says, that the victim went out and came back after eight. We met again later that evening, around nine or so after, when I took him some nice tea I'd brewed as a gift. So it was you who brought the tea that had clearly been drunk at the scene then? And I suppose you were discussing the works of Shakespeare, weren't you? Yes, that's right. That's exactly right. Romeo and Juliet, who was the stronger? Who would win in a fight to the death? It was a joyful debate. I'm sure. Such a stimulating subject, Shakespeare. And the debate became very heated, so you slipped poison into Mr. Shamspear's tea? No, never, not at all. Team Juliet won, that was me. And when I left his room, the flamboyant fellow was fighting fit. I swear it, categorically. I'd believe it. And Juliet won in a fight. Kick his ass. Mr. Natsume, you often say the same thing about yourself, I've noticed. That you have a cursed existence. I'm an unlucky son of a bitch! I'm sure I've mentioned this to you before, but I've been here in Great Britain for a year now, and in that time I've learned that it's no place for me. It can be very trying to live in a foreign land and adapt to the ways of another culture. There are foreigners everywhere I look, and they all stare at me. They all laugh. That's the impression I get whenever I go out. Makes me scared to leave my room. Which is why I've become a recluse. But even in my room, I find no respite from my fears. I've moved more times than I can remember. And then, one week ago, I moved into Briar Road. But why? I mean, why did you choose that place? That doesn't seem very... 
comfortable. Because the rent is cheap. I have so little money, it spoke to me. The rent? Obviously, there's a reason why it's cheap. Because the room is cursed. Cursed? Cursed how? The previous occupant, the man who lived there before I took the room, died there. Oh no! He was only a young man, but one morning he was found dead and no one could explain why. Surely no one would want to live in a room with a history like that. I didn't. When the letting agent recommended the place, I wavered. Oh, but I want books! And books cost money! A horrible history is a small price to pay! When I realized it would mean I could buy more books, I signed the lease like lightning. Brave or blinkered? But after I moved in, I soon came to realize what I'd done. I realized how horrible that room's history really was! Gosh, was it really so awful? Oh my god, you guys, we forgot to feed his cat. Oh no, we have to go back. We have to go feed his cat. He asked us to do that and we forgot. It didn't actually let us feed the cat, but but the cat is important. It's arguably the most important part of the game. How did the room's horrible history affect you, Mr. Natsume? What happened? At first, it was just a feeling. The feeling of beady eyes boring into my back, watching me. Do you think that might have just been your mind playing tricks on you? No, no, no. My mind doesn't know any tricks. It was someone else. It's been one long nightmare ever since I was given the keys to the place. A nightmare? You've been having bad dreams, you mean? All the souls who died in that room lean over me in my sleep and try to strangle me! That really is horrible. And, and now I come to think of it, it happened again last night, too. The very same night that Mr. Shamspear was writhing in agony from the poison in his body. I was on the verge of being suffocated silently by those miserable spirits in my room. You simply must move out of that room as soon as possible. Yes, you're right. I know it, and that's why. I'm already searching for the next room with a history to call home. I think perhaps you should try to avoid accommodation with any kind of history at all. Otherwise, I'm scared that you yourself may become history. <laughs> Whew, Suzato-san knows how to make the man listen. Yeah, damn, Suzato. Get him, I guess. Uh -huh. Of course, Mr. Lord of the Manor is worried about the curse on my room as well. You mean Mr. Garadab? Yes. He knows that if people keep dying there, he'll never be able to rent it out again. Well, that's true. I, for one, wouldn't go near the place. Ah, uh, perhaps. That may explain why the landlord pays so much attention to the gas lamps and his tenants' movements. You mean because he's worried about their well-being? He does seem to have an unusually keen interest in the amount of gas in the pipes. There must be a reason why he keeps such close tabs on the occupants of his let rooms. What do you mean, he pays so much attention to the gas lamps? Oh dear, uh, no, it's nothing to do with you, Mr. Natsume. Please, forget I said anything. Oh, now you're talking about me behind my back as well. well what's important is that Mr. Shams here isn't in fact dead at all. Well, once he's come around and he's able to tell us what happened, we'll be able to get you released. Yes, please. Oh, I do hope you're right. Ahem, excuse me. Oh, hi, Gregson. Again. Inspector Gregson. Couldn't help over here on what you just said. And on that note. Well, I have some good news and some bad news. If the bad news is that he's dead, I will scream. Which do you want first? Always, every time, the bad news comes first. When hope is all you have, hold on to it. That's my guiding principle. Right, well, in that case, good news it is. Huh? Sorry, but it's just a lot easier to explain everything that way. Then why did you ask me my preference? As you might have heard, the victim, Mr. Shamspear, was just unconscious. He's come around now. Yes, we saw it happen in all its terrifying glory. He's still being treated by the doctors, but we've managed to get a written statement from him already. Oh, isn't that wonderful, Mr. Natsume? 
Oh, thank goodness! He's gonna implicate Natsume, though, isn't he? It's all over, then. I can leave the somber cell. Sorry, no, that's not on the cards. What? Why ever not, Inspector? Mr. Shamspear has implicated someone as being responsible for what happened last night. Implicated someone? Fucking knew it. Oh, dear. You, you don't mean... I'm sorry to say I do, yes. He's pointing the finger at you, Mr. Natsume. <laughs> Why, sweet poison, did he seek it to end my life? That wicked Katesif. No Soseki Natsume. No! So I'm afraid you'll be in appearing in court as planned. You'll be wanting to make the necessary preparations. <laughs> no! And so, once again, Soseki-san found himself having to take the dock in the Old Bailey. Whether his room was haunted or whether he was just terribly unlucky, I knew I had no choice. The following day, I would represent him in court and do my utmost to break the curse that blighted him. To be continued? Yeah, I thought so. Yup, saving! The original Ace Attorney games, pretty much every single case was murder. So it's interesting that in this game they decided to kind of like turn away from that and be like, well, some of these victims are still alive and it's gonna get a little hinky. The old Bailey. This place always makes me feel strange. I seem to get chills down my spine and break out in a nervous sweat all at the same time. Well... I didn't think I'd be back here so soon. That's my line! Who said that? Oh. <laughs> Hi, Natsume. Good morning! Ah, good morning, Mr. Natsume. It was only two days ago that I was declared not guilty here. Yes, we somehow managed to prove you didn't stab Miss Green in the back. But now this! Another morning, another murder! And here I am again in this hellhole! Can't keep coming to court! I'm beginning to think he's right. It really does seem as though he's cursed. Mr. Narhodo, I'm afraid I have some bad news. Oh! Mr. Natsume, good morning. Yes, morning. So, here we are again. Yes, again. <laughs> Awkward silence. Judicial Assistant Miss Mikotoba Esquire S, what's the bad news? Oh dear, you heard, did you? If you come in shouting at the top of your voice, people can't help hearing what you say! Oh, I am sorry. You've done nothing wrong, Miss Uzato. Now, what is it? Well, it seems that the prosecution in today's trial is von Zoinks, because of course it is, will be led by Lord Barak von Zeeks. Uh, von Zeeks? Yeah! Oh no, oh no, no, no. What's up, Van Zoinks? So called Reaper of the Bailey, the most legendary prosecutor in the land. And a big dick. In the trial two days ago, he pursued Soseki san and I relentlessly. Of course, by the skin of our teeth, he managed to pull through, but still. Perhaps Mr. Natsume's acquittal in the last trial wasn't the end of the matter. After all... Yes, I know what you're thinking. The legend of the Reaper that says... And nothing can save a person in the dock when Lord Van Zeeks is in the prosecutor. Oh no! But even if that person is found not guilty, the accused will meet a mysterious end one way or the other. We've experienced it firsthand. A man we successfully defended met the most terrifying end after his acquittal. Right here in the Old Bailey. Rip in pieces, dude. Yeah, what do I have to put- do I have to put up with these ice-cold eyes boring into my skull again? A curse by evil spirits and now by the Reaper! Pair of petrifying perils, potentially! Well, if it's potentially... At least you appear to have hope, Mr. Natsume. Locum student, Mr. Naruhoto Esquire! Uh, yes? I'm- I'm innocent! You have to believe me! You- 
You more than anyone now. Don't worry. I'll be your steadfast ally every step of the way in this battle, I promise. And this promises to be a hard battle, I fear. Well? The trial is scheduled to begin shortly. We should move into the courtroom. Let's go. Man, they were just blasting through this case. I guess technically this, this is also another tutorial stage. Oh, yes, I forgot to say. I'm afraid he won't be able to make it. Mr. Sholmes, I mean. That's probably for the best. I mean, listen, I love he. I would love to see more of he, but like, yeah, he'd... Uh, <laughs> he might cause problems on purpose. If he were here, I might be tempted to rely on his help. And that could be seen as a weakness, if Lord Van Zeeks were to notice he'd prey on him mercilessly. At least, that's my gut feeling. Mr. Notohodo. You're right. Yes, you're so right. Oh, well said, locum student Mr. Notohodo Esquire. Well said. I swear on the sword at my side and on the spirit of Kazuma that it harbors. Show him what a Japanese lawyer can do. I'll set you free. With honor. Oh, yes. All right, let's fucking go. Dang game takes every opportunity to remind me that my best friend is dead. It's fine. It's fine. <sighs> A lot of voices I got to do now again. Suddenly. Okay, okay, okay. Let's do it. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. I now call upon the councils for the prosecution and defense to declare their willingness to proceed. What's up, Vampworth? The prosecution is ready. The defense is ready, my lord. Readiness for the trial, my learned Nipponese friend, is not what the defense needs. What you need is readiness for your inevitable, inevitable defeat. Stop talking like a Scooby-Doo villain, sir. It's not just my imagination. It's really there. Lord Van Zeeks has such an animosity towards us Japanese for some reason. It was some time ago now that he first became known as the Reaper of the Bailey, I believe. These past few years, he hasn't appeared in court at all. Yet now he's back in the courtroom. Though for some reason, only when I'm defending. This Reaper with his curious disdain for us Japanese as a prosecutor shrouded in mystery. Still, this isn't the time to be pondering that. I have to concentrate on soseki -san's trial. Furthermore, I now call upon the six ladies and gentlemen of the jury. You have been chosen at random to represent the will of the people in this trial. Are you ready for, to fulfill your duty? Absolutely! I had a feeling this larrikin wasn't innocent before. I must say that I feel especially ruthless on days when my hat refuses to sit right. Oh! Well, I rather like how you're wearing your hat. I think the ruthless look is quite fetching, really. I need to be somewhere at 10 o'clock. I have a very important meeting. Let's make this quick. Oh, I couldn't agree more. I need to take home five bob tonight or the missus will go through the roof. Oh, may the Lord show us all the light here and lead his flock to a righteous verdict. The British jury system is so very different to our own, isn't it? Quite extraordinary to think that the power of judgment is in the hands of six members of the public, who, most of which were here yesterday, <laughs> and that the judge can only pass sentence when all jurors are in agreement about the defendant's guilt. Six. I'm telling you guys, only ten people live in London. <laughs> six million? More like ten. At most. Six citizens of London chosen at random. Or at least that's the idea. The prosecution would draw attention to the fact that the accused was on trial here but two days ago. Accordingly, where possible, the same jurors have been asked to return for duty today. Oh, is that why? Very well, let us commence with the trial. Lord Van Zeeks, your opening statement, please. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it is not the intent of the prosecution to task cast doubt over your past decision. However, the innocent verdict afforded to this eccentric Nibonese before has dire consequences. Did the accused repent for his wrongdoing in that affair? 
Far from it. Instead, he used his freedom to perpetrate the most blood-curdling crime. Namely, that of the attempted murder of his neighboring lodger, an innocent Englishman. <laughs> to explain the circumstances of the crime, the prosecution calls its first witness to the stand. Be gone, Cape. The detective responsible for investigating the scene and the accused himself. Witnesses, your names and occupations, please. Yes, sir. Du Bois, Gregson, Detective Inspector at Scotland Yard's Homicide Division. Okay, so here's a fun thing about Gregson I noticed, and I can never unsee it now. So when he has his hands up in a salute like this, that hand is usually holding fish and chips. Um, I don't think they rigged him with separate fingers. I think his thumb is separate and his pinky is separate, but his three middle fingers are probably like all the same mass and they're just all rigged together. So it's like one control animates all three of those fingers at once. You can kind of tell because there's not like a solid line in the tone shader there, um, which means that it's probably like uh, not separated. I just thought that was interesting and I can't unsee it. And so now neither can any of you. <laughs> Ha! Huh. It's Soseki Natsume from the Empire of Japan. Uh, my government ordered me to come here as a student to study your language and culture. Mr. Natsume. Uh, yes, my lord, sir. I'm quite sure I'm not mistaken that you swore an oath never to set foot in my courtroom again. I remember it as if it were yesterday. The day before, in fact, my lord. But close enough. <laughs> uh, believe me, this is the last place I want to be. Inspector, let's hear from you first. Explain the case for the court. Right you are, sir. Yeah, it really does feel like a conflict of interest. The incident occurred at the Garrett household where the defendant has his lodgings. In the ground floor room of the victim, Mr. William Shamspear. The defendant has already admitted to visiting the victim on the night in question. Mr. Shamspear collapsed in his room as a result of poisoning by... Strict 9... Struck nine, struck nine. I feel like I've heard that name before and I can't remember how it's pronounced. It was found the following morning when the landlord, suspecting something was wrong, broke down the door. This means, I presume, that the door to the victim's room was locked at the time of the incident. Correct, my lord. It was locked from the inside, making entry or to or exit from the room impossible. Although the victim, Mr. Shamspear, lives to tell the tale, he very nearly didn't. The man was halfway to heaven when we first found him. Don't ask why I didn't bother to check his pulse. I'm very sensitive about it. Hmm. I was the first officer on the scene, my lord. And I have a photographic print here that I took at the time to show how it looked. Yes, a chilling scene indeed. The man looks very much deceased. Why is there water on the floor? Is the roof leaking? That's right. Everyone present believed that's exactly what it was. Very well. I shall accept this photographic print as evident for the court. Now then, Mr. Natsume. Ha! <laughs> yes! 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 As the defendant, do you have anything to say at this juncture? They're... They're haunted. Haunted by evil spirits. Good gracious, what's haunted? My lodgings! There's been a whole series of strange happenings in my lodgings! The tenant before me died in mysterious circumstances. A woman was stabbed by no one on the street outside. My neighbor was poisoned. And me! What about me? I've nearly been killed countless times! Killed, Mr. Natsume? How? Even on that fateful night it happened. When I returned from Mr. Shamspear's room... I lit my gas stove and climbed into bed, but before long, the stove went out, and somebody tried to kill me! You must always extinguish all fires before retiring for the night, Mr. Natsume. But it's so cold! My runny nose would freeze! The point is, I didn't poison my neighbor. Oh, why am I being accused of this? Why is my existence so cursed? Hashtag cursed. 
Thank you, witnesses. I believe I have a reasonably clear picture of events. If I could raise one more point, my lord. One more conclusive point. Conclusive? Go on. Fortunately, the victim, Mr. Shamspear, has regained consciousness after his ordeal. And he has named the true culprit. The poison consumed by the victim was administered in a cup of tea that he drank on the night in question. Tea, my lord, that was brought to the victim's room by the accused. The accused? Good grief! Order! Order! Oh, wrong voice. <laughs> yes, that's the crux of this whole case. Sasaki-san is innocent, then why? Why has the victim accused him? Well, Mr. Natsume, what have you to say to this accusation? That evening, yes, I did take some freshly brewed tea with me when I visited Mr. Shamspear's room as a gift. The public water pump outside always freezes at night, so I bought bottled water especially to make it. And this is the result! Never will I touch tea again, never! The public pump was frozen, you say? But that's not information we've heard before. That will do, thank you. Now, according to our laws, the defense must have the opportunity to cross-examine witnesses at least once. Therefore, I call upon these witnesses now for formal testimony. I presume the prosecution has no objections? None whatsoever, my lord. Good. Then you will give your account of events on the night in question to the court now. Yes, my lord! We're just breathing through this case. It really does kind of- it feels a little bit more uh, tutorial-y than the uh, last one did. The last game, I mean. It was around 9 o'clock that evening when I visited my neighbor and I took some tea with me as a gift. We had a heated literary debate over a nice hot drink, after which I went back to my room at around 11. Ugh, my tea was completely harmless. He couldn't have locked the door behind me otherwise, could he? Strict 9 takes some time to have an effect on the body. People don't keel over immediately after taking it. The victim would have been perfectly able to lock the door after his guest left. The argument still stands. Hmm, yes, I see. It all seems relatively straightforward. Excuse me, but that testimony does raise rather one, one rather crucial point, I think. Mr. Atsume claims his tea to have been harmless. Presumably, though. The teacups have been examined for traces of poison, haven't they? Why didn't I think of that? Well, as it happens, no. We haven't been able to. Did I hear you correctly, Inspector? Scotland Yard has failed to examine the suspect substance? How could you have overlooked something so important? Isn't that the first thing you should have done? My learned Nipponese friend is falsely incensed. The Inspector said Scotland Yard was unable to examine the tea. Not that it was overlooked. Unable? Why? Wild that we're going to court before getting all the evidence in order. It's simple enough. There was none left. Not a drop. Oh, you could have checked traces. Someone must have been very thirsty indeed. With current scientific techniques, it's not possible to test for poison under such circumstances. We only need a drop, but that one drop ac does actually have to exist, funny enough. Hmm. The lack of examination notwithstanding. It appears nothing other than the tea passed the victim's lips on the night in question. Not even soap! <laughs> I see. Thank you. The matter is clear. Cast your eyes over the jury, my learned friend. What? You can see it in their faces, I'm sure. The recognition of the accused guilt. Your client's fate is all but sealed. In a mere moment from now, you will lose, and your compatriot will be damned for all eternity. He's right. I can feel all six of the jurors looking daggers at me. I can't let them beat me down. I won't. Counsel for the defense, proceed with your cross-examination. Yes, my lord. Alrighty. I'm gonna look at the court record real quick. Have we added anything new? Aside from the photograph, no. 
Okay. All right, let's start pressing shit. Hold it! Were you and your neighbor good friends then? Ha! Uh, no, we weren't friends, not at all, not at all. Never, ever. A simple no would have sufficed. Then, um, why did you decide to pay him a visit? Mr. Shamspear fancies himself as having a great literary knowledge. As a fellow scholar of English literature, we find much to talk about together. It's wild that they always go to court so fast in this game, like I'm pretty sure it would be at least a few days before the trial would begin, but nope, let's go to this court the next day before all the evidence is ready. Yeah, whenever I watch, like, <clears throat> I watched a couple videos of people, like, like actual lawyers and legal professionals, like, reacting to these games, and they're always like, you go to court the next day? What? <laughs> They're always very surprised by that. Like, it makes sense as a game, but it is wild that they would go to court, you know, before all the evidence is ready. Yeesh. Come now. No Nipponese could understand the finer points of English literature. Boy, jeez, dude. And on the night in question, that was the topic of conversation as well, I presume. It was the day of my last trial when I was acquitted. Apparently the basic conceit is from Japanese legal system. I've heard that, um, but I know nothing about Japanese law, so I can't comment. Absurdly high conviction rate. I've heard that too, but again, I am no expert. I was never accused of a crime when I lived in Japan, you see, so I can't speak from experience. When I ran into Mr. Shamspear outside on the street, that was at around six o'clock. We exchanged one or two pleasantries, but it soon turned into a heated discussion. He was on his way out at the time, though, and so I promised to visit his room that evening at nine to continue our debate. But did I have ill intentions? No! Not one! Not two! Not any! Not at all! Never ever! A simple no would have sufficed, I feel. Then tell the court what did happen when you visited the victim's room. Okay. A literary debate about Shakespeare's works, I think you said, didn't you? Shakespeare? Ah, a very worthy topic of conversation, I must say. Oh, yes, my lord. Romeo and Juliet, who was stronger? It was a profoundly pleasurable parley. Romeo and Juliet? Who was stronger? I know I'm going to regret asking this, but how did the debate go? Well... We both agreed that we would reach a conclusion more quickly with a reenactment. So... We... A reenactment of Romeo and Juliet, where one of the characters drinks poison uh, that does not kill her, but knocks her unconscious for a while. Like that, perhaps? Like that? Perhaps, you know, that scene in Romeo and Juliet where she fakes her death with poison. You know, that scene. So he battles it out in a Greco-Roman style, naturally. What? Mr. Shamspear had all sorts of costumes in his room for such a contest. So when you say a reenactment, you mean you were actually in costume? He is Romeo, I is Juliet. Well, okay, I guess that bonks that theory, but after a vigorous, wild tussle, I as Juliet came out on top! A victory I'll cherish forever! I dare not imagine the terrible scene of carnage. The fact remains that it was you who prepared the tea and took it to the victim, correct? I boiled the water in my room and made a pot to take with me. I'd heard that he was too poor to have tea himself, you see. It's true. There was no sign of any tea leaves in the man's room. I wanted to do something nice, to be friendly. And look how it fucking turned out! So why is everyone looking at me with such suspicion? My tea was harmless! Of course it was! And do you have any basis for that statement, witness? Hold it! 
Yes, there was not a drop of tea left in the victim's room anywhere, was there? That's correct. Anyone would think the fellow had never had a pot of tea before. Must have licked it dry. Which is a pity, because one drop is all we would have needed to analyze it for poison. And you'd say that you returned home to your room at 11 o'clock, Mr. Natsume? Yes, definitely. By heaven and earth, I'll swear it. The landlord was able to verify that as it happens. He confirmed that the defendant went back to his room at 11 that night. And how was the landlord able to attest to this? He, um, said it was the lamps, I believe. The lamps, Inspector? When tenants return to their rooms and start using gas, the lamps in the other parts of the house flicker. Yes, Mr. Garadib seems to pay a lot of attention to the comings and going of his tenants. There's only one key to Mr. Shamsphere's room. I know that for certain. So he must have locked the door himself from inside his room. The victim has confirmed that to be the case, yes. So I'm right. My tea was harmless, completely harmless. If you take poison, you die. Everyone knows that. And people die when they're killed. <laughs> it's not that simple, I'm afraid. It, uh, what do you mean? Hold it! How long does it take for symptoms to appear then? According to the coroner I was speaking to at the yard about 30 minutes after the poison's consumed. Then the victim suffers violent convulsion, cramping and stiffness, and eventually dies from asphyxiation. So there's a 30 minute interval between when the poison is ingested and the onset of symptoms. There seems to be a lot of different types of poison in the world, that's for sure. For real, there's so much poisoning in these games. Cause like... Let's see. The very first game in the first case 1-1 one, one was a poisoning. Then case 2 was that one on the boat. Uh, and then case 3 was the um, stabbing. Case 4 was... I'm blanking. All I remember about that one was uh, violence. Oh, um, domestic violence. Uh, stabbing. And then... Yeah, so I guess, and then the last one was uh, not poisoning either. Um, but 1-1 one, one and 2-1 were both poisonings. And now this one, well, okay, so technically the last case was a poisoning and a stabbing. But she was poisoned first and then stabbed. Um, and then this one's another poisoning. There's a lot of poison in these games. Oh dear, death by poisoning again. It's always so awful. 30 minutes is a long time. Certainly long enough for the victim to have locked the door behind the accused after he left. Can't deny that. And it further degrades Soseki-san's alibi. I have the medical report from the doctor who examined the victim here, my lord. It spells it out, really. The accused is the only person who could have done it. Very well. The court will add this report to the court record as evidence. Oh, yes. I see it here. Delayed onset of symptoms. Great. Okay, that's a new thing. Gimme. William Shamsphere. Ingestion of small quantity of strychnine. Toxic effects present present 30 minutes after ingestion. High likelihood of the substance having been mixed with the tea the victim was drinking, but no sample could be obtained for testing. Uh, the poisoning induce poisoning incident occurred at around 1.30 a.m. on the 21st February. Stuff from the victim's pocket watch that appears to have broken when the man collapsed after the delayed onset of symptoms. No container for the poison was found at the scene. Okay, I feel like that last sentence is going to be important. Hold it! The argument still stands, you say. This is what Mr. Natsume has been saying, isn't it? The pair of them drank tea together that night, so if there was poison in it, the victim wouldn't have been able to lock the door after the accused left later on. Exactly! Yeah, me and my tea are innocent! Sweet and innocent, I tell you! I'm afraid, sir, that doesn't follow. You see, strychnine is a slow acting poison. In other words, it takes time for the symptoms to appear. So you could have left the room up to 30 minutes after the victim drank the tea. And as long as you did that, Mr. Shamsphere could have locked the door after you'd gone. But, but no! We drank the tree straight away! The battle over whether Romeo or Juliet was stronger, that came after the tea. Do you have any evidence to support that statement? In 
my great homeland, the Empire of Japan, we have a saying. Drink to you while it's hot! Sure, a proverb will satisfy the prosecution. I'm afraid there's no conclusive proof to support the defendant's assertion. On the contrary, there are sufficient grounds to infer his guilt in this matter. No! That's the extent of their testimony, is it? If I could voice a personal opinion, Mr. Naruhodo. Uh, of course, go ahead. Mr. Natsume is arguing for his innocence so adamantly and so persistently. Yet Inspector Gregson just brushes what he says aside. It's really quite infuriating. I agree. So what we need to so we need to find an inconsistency in what the inspector is saying, I think. I'm afraid so. As things stand, the jurors are able to find are sure to find Mr. Natsume guilty. As I see it, what we need to focus on is the poison and the tea. Well, let's listen carefully to his testimony again. Yes! Okay. I just remembered, we got those teacups, and I never actually got a ch chance to examine them. This must be the cup that Mr. Shamspear was drinking from, then. It's stained on the inside. If tea does that, I'm afraid, even green tea. Oh, really? I've never noticed before. You've never noticed? Well, I'd never leave it in the cup long enough for it to leave a mark. I like to gulp it down. Drink tea while it's hot! That's the Japanese way, isn't it? Oh dear, so many people seem to have the wrong idea about our culture. And most of them are Japanese! <laughs> hmm, anything else worth examining? There's no mark on the inside of the other cup, that's interesting. This is the teacup from which Mr. Natsume was drinking. Yes, unlike the other one, the inside of the cup is completely clean. I suppose you must have drugged the contents before the tea had a chance to leave a mark. I always gulp it down, too. Sorry, Mr. Naruhodo. Well, if you just sip it little by little, it goes cold. Clearly, I shall have to instruct you in the proper way to take tea. Hmm. I was about to say, the ice cubes were poisoned. So the man who drank it slowly was poisoned, and the man who drank it quickly was not poisoned. But I don't think you put ice in tea. <laughs> that actually is a puzzle that I've heard in the past, though. Although it would imply that Shamspear drank his slowly. I feel like we have to present the teacup to one of these. Hmm. Objection! Okay, not that one. What about this one? No, not that one either. Okay, fine. <laughs> Just gonna real casually. None of you saw anything. I think I'm getting ahead of myself here. Hmm. Oh. What is it, Mr. Nadahodo? Bar of soap. When we first found it, I could have sworn there's some sort of round disc in this depression j just here. A reddish one. Yes, you're right. I noticed that too, and I thought that was weird. I remember it too. But now the depression is completely empty. Where could the disc have gone? Ha. Huh. Okay. I still want to know why this man was chewing on soap. I know he wasn't actually chewing on it, but it just, it strikes me as odd.
And just noshing on some uh, body soap here. Don't worry about it. I was just thinking about that. Does they say, like, exact... 9 o'clock in the evening. Okay, yeah. So that was, like, way later. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> the argument still stands, you say? I think not, Inspector. Come again. I think you'll find that you've overlooked a very significant chronological inconsistency here. A chrono what? Chrono Trigger, what do you want about? <laughs> Never played that game, I just know the title. According to this report, the victim must have consumed the poison at around 1.30 in the morning. And yet, the defendant, Mr. Natsume, left the victim's room at 11. Ah. Yes, that's right. There's more than two hours of missing time there. You In other words... If there was poison in the tea that Mr. Natsume brought to the victim's room, how could the victim have fallen ill to it two and a half full hours after the defendant left? Gah! Didn't you give them the same sprite animation? <laughs> While the defense's argument is entirely reasonable, how do you respond, Lord Van Zeeks, that there's no way to prove that? It's all speculation. It's like you have no solid proof that about the time, because it's all just what you said, and there's no solid proof for that. Right. Pray forgive the discourtesy if my mind has wandered. I was considering what cuisine would best complement the contents of my hallowed chalice this luncheon. Stop day drinking, dude. How could it have happened, you ask? I do hate to shatter illusions, but my Nipponese friend appears to be chasing a phantom idea. A phantom? Is it so hard to imagine that the victim drank his tea after the accused had left? For example, at the time stated in the medical report. Yes, at around half past one. <laughs> Mr. Natsume brought the tea with him to drink together with his neighbor. And in Japan, there's a well-known saying. A drink tea while it's hot. We're not in Japan. And in my country, there's an even more apt saying. That it's nothing more refreshing than cold tea. The point is, if there was such a long gap, there may be other ways to explain how the victim came to be poisoned. Other possibilities. What sort of possibilities, Council? Uh, the possible kind. Well... For example, the man could have had another visitor. Another visitor. That's a very bold assertion, my learned friend, from someone who has nothing to substantiate it. Or, or the victim could have taken the poison of his own volition. You suggest this may have been suicide, counsel. Objection. Mr. Shamspear has categorically denied suicide. The idea can and must be discounted. Objection. But, but he could be lying. Is something wrong, Lord Van Zeeks? I was listening to the sound of the carriage pulling up outside the courtroom. Pray, forget the discourtesy. Carriage? What carriage? It would seem... That the key player in this case has just arrived. Out, out, brief candle! Life's but a walking shadow! Oh boy! A poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more! It is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Who 
sir, are you? William Shamspear, my lord. Alas, twas I undone by these bitter events. I am the victim. What? What's he doing here? Jeez. Curly little shoes. The prosecution seeks to call this gentleman to the stand. With this testimony, my learned friend's futile resistance will be utterly crushed. You're calling him as a witness? Very well, counsel. I grant your request with interest. I'm curious to discover what the court shall hear from the victim himself. Happy I am, Shamspear, to regale thee with my tale of woe, my lord. But, but I still have my own tale to tell. My own tale of worse woe. I can regale the court with the tale of my perfect innocence in perfect English. That will do, Mr. Natsume. Let the court now hear from the victim. Oh, you too. All right, so that's Mr. Shamspear. But who's that other man beside him? It's Popeye the Sailor Man. Yes, I think... I feel sure that we've caught a glimpse of that man before. State your names and occupations for the court, please, witnesses. A writer of words so sweet they do scent the breeze. An inventor of ideas so profound they compose the earth. The unrivaled poet, the unmatched scribe, William Shakespeare. Were the great bard to be recalled to life anew. Lo, what a magnificent man. Good fellows, I am he who ponders such a miracle. William Shamspear. Oh, um, the name's Miedemann. Adrian B. Miedemann. Adrian? I feel like... But Meterman is obviously something. Popeye the Meterman. I work for the Al Altamont Gas Company, East End Branch Office. Ah, oh, I remember now. It was yesterday on Briar Road. Oh, yes. She's right, it's him. Oh, what's this? What's that man doing over there? Looks like he's trying to see into Suseki-san's lodgings. Is something wrong, Mr. Narihoto? Um, excuse me, could we have a word? Yeah. Yes, we spotted him outside Mr. Garadip's house that morning. And he's a gas company employee? What does he have to do with- what does that have to do with the case? So, Mr. Million, Mr. William Shamspear, you are the victim in this miserable affair, correct? Oh, heaven! Oh, hell! Do you command me to remember that sweet poison that didst cross me and cross my innocent lips? I subpoenaed him for the trial, with his doctor's permission, naturally. Hearing the testimony of the grieved will remove any room for doubt from the jurors' minds, I'm sure. Behold, you have only to arrange the letters of my name to see that me's a seraph, an angel indeed. And thus I be noble of mind, sweet of nature, and verily honest of heart, as all heavenly angels be. And because there isn't a less contrived meaning in your name, no, not at all. The jurors seem to be very moved by this man, I'm afraid. They're actually taking this seraph anagram idea seriously? Thank you, witnesses, for your illuminating introductions. But, my lord, what's the man next to Mr. Shamspear doing here? The gas man, I believe. Oh, well, me? Oh, uh, well, now. Allow me to enlighten my, my learned friend. You recall, I presume, your earlier impertinence? When you suggested that the victim had another visitor to his room on the night in question? And moreover, that the victim is a compulsive liar. What? No, I didn't quite say that. This young chin stroker here is, to, is here to controvert your wild claims, conclusively. Is that not so, Mr. Mitterman? Eh? Hey, hang on. No, I'm just here. 
I hereby call for your formal testimonies. You will tell the court as lucidly as possible what happened on the night in question. One may smile and smile and be a villain. Yes, it doth pain me, but let the truth be spoken. The truth of that wintry night of my discontent. Hmm. Got quite a chin on him. The snow lay about. My neighbor did cometh in the evening, bearing a gift of tea. But merry, bitter was his drink, and when he left I did fall prostrate on my table. Twas the tea alone did pass my lips that late hour, not else. I was outside this bloke's window in the freezing cold all night, keeping an eye on his room. No one else visited his room but that short little round-backed Easton fella. Okay, stalker. Fucking sus. Wait, what did you say? You were keeping an eye on Mr. Shamspear's room all night? That's right. Of course the bloke's window is all but blocked up, isn't it? But there's a little gap in the bricks where you can see into the room. So I spent the night trying to keep my teeth from chattering as I peered in through that. The question is, sir, why? Yeah. Uh, well now, uh, that's because he's on my list. What a piece of work is a man. Wherefore wouldst thou not stare in wonderment? What are you talking about? This buzzing busybody had not part in this play. I pray thee, pray him no heed. Make no more ado about his tedious words. What'd you say about me? Okay, so now I see the bee thing. Calm yourself. This court is concerned with what happened on the night in question. Nothing more. Indeed, that is so. And, as the testimony we have just heard clearly reveals, there was no one other than the accused present at the time who could have carried out this crime. Uh, yeah, except the dude who is fucking watching his room all night. Sus AF. Well, I believe this may be the final testimony of the trial. Now, counsel, the defense may proceed with the cross-examination. Uh, yes, my lord. I'm gonna eat one of my cookies now. I'm hungry. Mm-hmm. Let me take, like, two minutes. Eat one of my cookies. Okay, let's see. Hold it! Let me stop you there. Mr. Natsume left your room at 11 o'clock, but it wasn't until after 2 that the poison made you collapse. That amounts to more than 3 hours of missing time. Uh... Sir? What the fuck? He's just, you know... You know, he's just vibing. He's just having a time. <laughs> Does a gay little dance that pisses you off. <laughs> well, it's working. I'm pissed off. If the defendant had really put the poison into your tea, that three hour window of time is something you've, you're going to have to explain. Gladly, it is an easy task. What? I did drink of the tea, not while my, my guest did tarry, but after he took leave of me. Faith, twas stone cold, but at one hour post midnight, verily were my lips parched. Objection. That doesn't sound normal. Nay, tis quite ordinary, sire. After all, thou wouldst recall our fiery debate. Amid such argument, there'd be no time for fiery tea. Romeo and Juliet again. And who is stronger? Mr. Shamspear, in summary, allow me to confirm. Did you not come here with the intention of naming your attacker? But of course, my liege. 
Towards the stooped lover of words that did attempt to shuffle me off this mortal coil. Yeah, all we know is what that we all know what that means. Hold it! So you didn't have any kind of evening meal, dinner, supper? Huh! Fie on the luxury! Fie on gluttony! To eat thrice daily is but a waste of time. Sorry. I would that my belly were full. No more of that than the sun doth rise. Well, most heroic eating habits, I must say. Night and day do I fill my hours with learned study of the great bard and playwright. Hence it is that uh, there doth not in my chamber be more than the costumes of mine art. That would appear to be the case, as even the rodent was found starved to death in your room. Oh, Jesus Christ. Now I think of it, it's not just food that was conspicuously missing from that room, was it? I don't recall seeing a single play or a script anywhere. For I have devoured them all, uh. You've eaten them? Every word be within mine skull. Didst thou imagine otherwise? Uh, right, that wasn't misleading at all. Now, could you turn around, do you think? Which brings us to the conclusion that the only way the poison could have passed the victim's lips is that is in the tea. Uh. Hold it! But the windows of that house have all been filled in. A historical artifact of the now defunct window tax. Yeah, you are right, that. All bricked up horribly. Uh, but as it happens, there's a little part of the brickwork at the bottom corner that's been opened up. I was looking in through that gap. Yes, there were a few bricks loose, weren't there? And for some strange reason, a couple of bars of soap lined up on the ledge outside as well. I don't like going around poking my chin in other people's business. Especially on freezing cold nights. But them's my orders, so that's what I'll keep doing. As long as there's a breath in my body. What's with all the theatricals today? Out of interest, Mr. Meterman, after the accused had left and returned to his own lodgings, did you see the victim leave the room at all? No, he never left. He was in that room the whole time as far as I'm concerned. And we can therefore discount the possibility of suicide. How can you be so sure of that? The police carried out a thorough investigation of the scene and found no receptacle for the poison. And since we know the victim didn't leave his room, and hence didn't dispose of the poison's container himself, it's clear that this was no attempted suicide. Only the culprits could have removed the receptacle. Ah, uh, yes. Lucidly explained, Counsel. Thank you. It really was. Can't argue with the logic. No one else visited his room that time, but a short little round back to the fella. Okay. You say a short little round back to Eastern fella, so you can't be sure it was the defendant then? Objection. How many other short little round back to Nipponese with a mustache do you think there are in London? Well, of course. It's only a narrow gap and it was quite dark, so I didn't notice the mustache. We showed up at around nine, so I'm pretty sure myself. And when the person you saw arrived, did he and Mr. Shamspear drink tea together? Nah, sorry. Couldn't say. Starting to think there was actually poison in the soap. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. Because, okay. If we look at the teacups. This one has like the little red ring inside. And then the soap had like the red ring on it yesterday. The little reddish medallion has mysteriously vanished. So I feel like that was the poison. But how did it get from the soap into the tea is the question. <laughs> What happened there? Because I couldn't see into the room all that well, could I? But what I did see was the silhouette of that little round-backed fellow wearing a pretty dress. Then the pair of them started some kind of wrestling match. I tell you, I didn't know what to make of it. <sighs> I suppose that, that was the Romeo and Juliet championship battle getting underway. Mr. Mitterman. 
Allow me to confirm one final time. Apart from the accused, can you state with certainty that no one else visited the victim on the night in question? No question! Yes, Minzana! So that's the entire testimony. What do you think, Mr. Naruhodo? Well, uh... I can't see any obvious holes at all, to be honest. No, oh dear. If nobody else visited Mr. Shamspear's room that night apart from Mr. Natsume, I imagine the members of the jury will all conclude the same thing. Right, that he's guilty. Well, all we can do is press these witnesses for more information and hope for a breakthrough. Yes! Okay, the only thing I haven't pressed was that very first statement, I think. Hold it! To be clear, by neighbor, you are referring to the defendant, Mr. Natsume? Oh, indeed, sire. What chance thou would toss him the man from upstairs? And at what time did the mustachioed Nipponese visit you in your room? Our meeting was promised for the hour of nine, and lo, did he come to tender a gift of fragrant tea. Details, details which are in accordance with the defendant's own testimony, yes. And we were broiled in such a literary debate as history had not seen before. Uh, by which I presume he means... Their discussion about who was the stronger, Romeo or Juliet? I, Shamsphere, did play the part of young Romeo, whilst my neighbor played the fair Juliet. Each of us dressed as would our characters be to bring weight upon our merry experiment. I dare not imagine the scene. Frailty! Thy name is woman. Canst thou imagine how dismayed I was? Yes, I had heard of the Eastern art of jujitsu, but... Nor did I dream t'would be a skill practiced by the comely maiden. Julia beat Romeo up. This is not helping our case. Yeah, clearly, um, Natsume just used a uh, Natsume takedown. <laughs> Flip him over onto the ground. Everybody's from Japan knows how to do that, right? I believe the court has heard enough about your earth-shattering literary debate. Perhaps you could reiterate your statement about the tea and the accused brought to your room. My liege, I am thy servant. Gladly I would do thy bidding. Oh, great. My lord? Goodness me, yes, Mr. Foreman? Oh, I've kept my mouth shut and listened up until now, but this has gone on long enough. Are you all with me? Yes! Are we to understand that you ladies and gentlemen of the jury are in the agreement with one another? <laughs> that you've reached a unanimous decision? Two, right, we have. Are you all with me? Yes! Uh, wait, no! The defense is in the middle of a cross-examination! To be honest, I was holding out a bit of hope for you, young man. Especially after you identified those few hours that followed the cues leaving the victim's room. Yes, the three missing hours, as you put it. But in the end, what difference did they make? None, as far as I can see. And since that's now apparent, there's really no reason to delay our decision any longer. Like I was saying before, if I don't take five bob home with me tonight, the missus will blow a top. Hmm? What's that? Sorry, I didn't quite catch what you said. Very well. Let the court be apprised of your decisions. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will state your leanings as to the defendant's culpability. Guilty! Guilty. 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 Boo. You dang fire hazard. Ugh. All of you? Well, it would appear that the jury is indeed unanimous. So, this time at least it seems justice will be done. All's well that ends well, as they say. This calls for a toast, I feel. Is he guilty being punished? Yeah. Yeah. Get up, 
Mr. Narohoto, please! The trial isn't over yet! W what do you mean, Miss Suzato? What about the information I found in this Encyclopedia of British Law I have? That obscure right that belongs to the defense in these situations. Remember? Listen, it's the start of the second game. They have to assume that you don't remember how the summation examinations work. Summation examination. Yes, that's right. We don't have a jury in Japanese courts, 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 of course. But here in a British court of law, if we can reverse the decisions by a majority of the jurors, we could force the trial to continue. It's the tutorial case. They gotta go through it. Like, it's brand new. This trial can't end now. Whatever it takes. I just can't let that happen. The defense moves to invoke its right to a summation examination, my lord. Why am I not surprised at my learned Nipponese friend's inability to admit defeat? You choose to cling desperately to some archaic rule you barely comprehend instead of accepting the truth. Certainly no other defense counselor in recent times has exercised the right to a summation examination. Because they all know that once the jury's mind is set, it cannot be altered. Oh yeah? How about all those times when it was? Nevertheless, the right remains and must be upheld. The defense counsel's request is granted. This court will proceed with a summation examination as outlined in the Encyclopedia of British Law. Thank you, my lord. Are you and your fellows prepared, Mr. Foreman? Believe me, my lord, we know all about this young lad's tenacity. And we're ready for it. Very well. In that case, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I hereby call upon each of you to state the grounds upon which you find the defendant guilty for the crime in which he stands accused. All right. And I think this game isn't really going to, this part of the game might not give me a very good stopping point. Uh, it's about time that I usually end. It's a smidge early. But if I'm being honest, y'all, I'm actually kind of tired. So I might just leave this um, as our stopping place for the night. Uh, and then we continue onward next time. On to Friday. Yes, Friday. Why are my little characters, why is her little mouth still moving? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm actually like really tired today more than usual. I'm not sure why, um, but I'm just like, I'm, I'm sitting here and like my eyes are starting to like hurt a little bit. And I'm like, oh boy, I need to go take a lay down, I think maybe. Um, but yeah, so thanks for coming out, you guys. Uh, I'm going to find somebody to raid. Uh, let's go. Here, I'll go ahead and uh, save before I forget. Yoink. Alrighty, let's see who's on. <laughs> Alrighty, so this is actually someone who I've followed for a little bit, um, but I don't think I've ever raided her. Uh, so we are going to raid a, uh, she's a VTuber called, I have no idea how to pronounce her username, um, but uh, Chalcedonix. Uh, Looks like she's playing uh, Pioneers of Olive Town right now, which is a cute game that I have yet to play myself, but I kind of want to. So I'm going to go ahead and activate that raid. And uh, while the raid is going, I am going to um, do my typical shilling. Uh, so thanks, everybody, for coming out. Um, I hope you enjoy this continuation of Ace Attorney Party Times. <laughs> uh, we will be continuing our usual time, 5 p.m. CST, on Friday, we will probably be wrapping up this case and moving on to case three next time. Uh, since this is the tutorial stage, I imagine it's probably going to be pretty short. Um, but I feel like we're not quite out of the woods yet, so it's probably going to take a while longer next time. Uh, so make sure if you are new here, make sure to follow if you aren't already. Uh, that way you get notifications every time I go live. You can also follow me on Twitter and join my Discord, uh, which are... Oh, no, don't, don't, no hints, no hints. I don't want any hints. Um, yeah, so um, the Discord is mostly for my webcomic, uh, but we do have a stream chat channel in there, and I do have announcements whenever the stream goes live. Um, also, 
Uh, hey, go read my webcomic. It updated today. Yay, new page today. Stuff is happening. Woohoo! Um, anyway, uh, so the raid's about to start. So uh, everybody uh, head over there and everybody in the chat yell Star Raid! And if you have emotes, please feel free to use those. Yeehaw emote is good for rage. It's quite fun. Uh, anyway, I will see you guys next time. Thanks for coming. Uh, bye bye.